Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we can't no value the haters. Now they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Okay, so my iPad is in on. What number podcast is this, by the way? Rob, tell me. 275. 270. Is that accurate? Five. That is correct. Wow. By the way, just so you know, we're making up for all the time that we've been super on time. We're starting to, you know, start the podcast even sooner than we typically do. Again, 8.58 today, the usual time we start. We got a lot of topics to go through. I think we're going to have a guy that's going to join us here in a minute. Uh, he's, uh, he's fresh and he's fit. Yesterday, I was going to go to a different podcast in Palm Beach called uh, Old and Out of Shape, but then uh, I decided to go to Miami on this podcast called Fresh and Fit. He'll be here uh, in a few minutes. They're coming up on the Miami traffic. That, uh, that Miami heat. heat. Yeah, can we oh, talk about that for a second? Come on, baby. We'll talk about that at the end okay. for all our sports fans that love it when we talk about we sports. We don't want to lose all our viewers but right now. Let me now. tell you what we got. Here's what we got. We got a lot of things to talk about here with uh, the debt ceiling that was just... Uh, they're going back and forth with negotiations. There's six things, uh, six must no provisions. We'll talk about that. DeSantis going after Trump like never before. Poll shows dead heat in Florida between DeSantis and Trump. Lindsey Graham says Russians dying is the best money the U.S. spent. <laughs> and right afterwards, Russia issues Lindsey Graham arrest warrant after Ukraine comments. There's a poll that just came out that even Jake Tapper couldn't control himself. I don't know if you saw this, Rob. On the Jake Tapper poll, when it was announced, 66% of voters say Biden is too old to serve four more years. And this was on CNN when he had to read this. And Jake said, this is horrible. <laughs> There's nothing good about this. He couldn't even hold himself. Uh, China blows up a uh, U.S. Navy uh, largest uh, warship and menacing sim uh, stim uh, simulation. I was about to say stimulation, but it's simulation that Same they thing. did. Same thing. Uh, days after Twitter block, Turkish uh, President Erdogan, political opponents from uh, posting on the site, the increasingly authoritarian leader won re-election after a contested vote, which is devastating to people in Turkey. Elon Musk Neuralink wins FDA approval for human study of brain implants. Mark Cuban's talking shit about Elon Musk. We'll get into that. Job market, more high school grad, forego college in the hot labor market. And America's biggest source of jobs is cooling off. We'll discuss that. Consumer debt is officially $17 trillion for the first time. Streaming services are removing tons of movies and shows. It's not personal. It's strictly business, they say. And it's more expensive to live, and workers are tapping into their 401ks for help. That is a New York Times story. You know when's the last time Bud, uh, Bud Light uh, uh, actually sent a tweet out? How long? It's month been a month come since on. they tweeted anything. And somebody at Target, uh, there was a bomb threat sent by an angry pro-pride left-winger so a lot of people are uh, uh, seeing what's going on there with that. And then obviously you got a story you want to talk about, the Army veteran. <laughs> TikTok goes viral after details. Frustrating experience with the V8. So, Tom, let's start off with the economy here. Um, because a person said once before, it's the economy. Stupid. Stupid. So we're going to start off with the economy. Awesome. See what we can awesome. Do so more high school grad forego college in the hot uh, labor market. This is a Wall Street Journal story that we have here. Uh, page 11, if you guys want to go to it. So the college enrollment rate at the recent U.S. school high school graduate has declined to 62% in 2022 from 66.2% in 2019. That's just three years ago. As more young people opt for blue-collar jobs in a strong labor market, job growth in industries like leisure and hospitality, construction, manufacturing, and warehousing, which don't require college degrees, has outpaced Overall job gains, the low unemployment rate for teenage workers reaching a 70-year low of 9.2% last month has led to significant pay increases. Hourly earnings for leisure and hospitality workers rose by nearly 30% from April 2019 to April 2023. Wages are also higher in industries with additional training requirements like apprenticeship. Factors contributing to the decline in college enrollments include the high cost of education, college closures, uh, uncertain return on investment. That's a big one right there, Tom. Uncertain return on investment. Mm -hmm. And this is Wall Street Journal saying this. That may be the biggest one out of all of them, and a lack of confidence in the value of a degree. Many Americans uh, question the worth of a college degree, further discouraged by improving job prospects in blue-collar fields. Tom. 
Wow, this is a lot. Um, but this is basically, this is one of those stories where you read it, you step back from it, and you go, well, actually, that makes sense. And sort of you saw it coming, but you weren't paying attention. So what's happening right now is um, there's something that was left out on that summary there. You didn't leave it out, Pat. It wasn't in the... the um, wasn't in the in the story and that is that there is a fair to say is about 35 percent people in this country are conservative and very concerned about the woke things and you have a lot of parents that are out there that are going to orientations at colleges saying what the hell am i doing here sending my kid to be indoctrinated in a woke institution so there is also parents stepping back and saying wow is is the college roi worth it i'm about to put you know 25 to 40 grand a year in there put 100 to 160 just to put my kid through a basic school and that's being met with, hey, wait a minute, you know, um, my uncle was a plumber, and you find out you can make $175,000 a year, I looked up, as a journeyman plumber, not after 20 years, after like five years. So the trades are heating up, the blue collar trades are heating up, giving, you know, um, real alternatives. And the job market on small business on the other side. Now, small businesses, we're not talking about the plumbers. We're talking about small businesses that are um, $10 million in sales. That's small compared to, you know, large corporate. And what they're seeing is a lot of people coming in and they still want the COVID package. You know, well, you know, there's, you're looking for a lot of bookkeepers. There's a quote from a bookkeeper that said somebody came in, they're looking for 61 bucks an hour to be a bookkeeper. And it's like, $10 million company, you would think, wow, can you afford that? No, you can't. Um, Tom, so from a perspective of what you're talking about here, I think it's important if you're comfortable talking about this. You made a very big point about the fact that parents are worried about sending their kids to uh, a woke school. The other day, uh, Paul, uh, my sister and I were talking to my niece who is wanting to be a lawyer and she's going to a school and we're having these conversations about, you know, the school you're going to, you're going to spend a week there. There's going to be woke experiences there that you have to just kind of be prepared for. You just took your daughter, one of them, your oldest, to go to different universities. If you're comfortable giving names, do it. I won't do it. What was the experience like, and how immediately did you see signs of these guys doing the woke thing in universities, some of the biggest universities in America, because your daughter has a 4.6 GPA, so she's only going to the best of universities. Yeah, well, so we did the standard thing. Uh, we went on tours, and you register online, and you can go to on a certain day, and they take you on a tour. The first part of the tours is you go into a large room, and there'll be somebody from admissions talking, and then there's usually like a senior who's there to talk about the school, the experience of the school, and to personally say, hey, I majored in this, this is what it's all about. But they also stay with a script that comes from the school itself. And the first topic at a, at a top 15 school that is located in the heart of what you might call Music City, and I think we know who we're talking about here, the colors are black and gold, um, <laughs> they, um, they basically said, Anne, welcome. You are here for a tour. We're so proud of what we've done here. There's a lot of things going on here. And one of the first things we want to let you know is how in, we're not just inclusive. We're inclusive and also providing services. You can get gender reassignment oh. surgery and support here at not our health center, but the hospital that's part of the research. Let, let, me, ask this question. let me ask this question. How many minutes before the orientation started that message was given? That was within the first five minutes. So, tell me you're joking, Tom. No, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. And I had a parent in front of me turns her turns around and looks at me and and she makes eye content and under her breath you could hear her say she didn't curse she was like starting with this oh, God. you know uh, and then when we so about 20 minutes this was a script this person was going off a script and then said my name is so and so he, i made yeah, yeah 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 and this is yeah yeah it, it, exactly but he he identified his pronouns too he, <laughs> he said i go by you know, I go by, you know... The, thy, th was he Shakespearean pronouns? Because they're in college. Mm -hmm. like, no, no, the, no. thine, thyself. So I saw a lot of people Idiot. that were there. And then <laughs> and then we, we went on a tour, and there was a father that was there who said something very, very telling. He says, 
I understand everybody's going to be here. Just tell me about the university and why this is the place where my kid's going to get a fantastic education. So he was not like going off right wing and going off on somebody. But you, so you have that going on as well as the inflation and tuition and college closures and the on campus, off campus controversy we had during COVID. Wait, I get the same diploma and I'm not on campus and I don't have the labs, but I have to pay the same tuition. Remember that story in the middle of COVID that parents were asking, why am I still paying lab fees and all these other fees at school if it's basically the remote education now? Because you're saying kids are off campus. So now I'm getting like a remote degree like Grand Canyon University. I can, you know, go online and get one of those onlines. And so what's happening is the high school grads are seeing all this, put all this in a, in a pot of chili, and then say, you know, your, your uncle was a plumber. You can make 175 a year a plumber after five years. Do an apprenticeship, get your license, get a couple trucks, and you can have a great air conditioning pump. The trades. So there's a lot of trade jobs are out there. And small businesses under $10 million, you know, they aren't going to get you the work from home thing. And so these things are fighting with each other. And you step back from it and you say... I am so surprised. Adam. Yeah, for me, this, this entire story comes down to one word, and that word is disruption. Um, we're, we're, we've seen this in cable news. To me, college is the young version of cable news. We, we went over the, the stats the other day where uh, how many, five years ago, 10 years ago, 70% of homes had cable, cable. Yep. in All their the house. Subscriptions dropping. And now it is now 40%. <sighs> um, Things have been disrupted, whether it's money and Bitcoin, whether it's politics and Trump and outsiders going against the system, whether it's college, whether it's education, there's no need to go the mainstream traditional route. And if you actually look at the numbers in college, in the 1970s, 1980s, 60% of college attendees were men, 40% women. Now it is completely flipped. Women make up 60% of college attendees and men make up 40%. So we talk about this concept of hypergamy and women won't date down. That's also becoming an increasingly big problem where women are making more money, they're more educated, where they won't necessarily date down a blue collar guy. Tom made a great point. Sometimes you can be a blue collar guy, a plumber, make 150 grand a year. Hell yeah, buddy, make that money. The problem is, would a woman date a plumber? And that's something that men need to consider when they go into college. Now, for me, college comes Depends down. Depends on the kind of a plumber, though. I mean, let's just. Yeah, that's put, true. Well, you're Mario. Right. You, you were saying. Shout out, uh, shout out to Mario Brothers. Underground conferences. Uh, but but go ahead. Keep going. You have different options these days <laughs> that you do. <laughs> that's your sponsor, read right there. That's exactly right. You do have different <laughs> options these days. Check out my pack, um, baby. As a man, specifically, um, you can be. You can get into entrepreneurship. You can get to technical school. You can get to apprenticeship. Um, there, there's so many different options that didn't exist 20 years ago when this whole, you know, should I go to college, not go to college debate really started rearing its ugly head. And why did it rear its ugly head? Let's get real here. College has increased, what, a thousand percent ROI in the last 20 years? Has education increased a thousand percent? Has increased... 10%, 20%, as college even taught you more. The We all know, I mean, this also comes down to indoctrination versus education. We've highlighted many times that, what, one in 11 professors are on the left when it comes to college. Is that the number these days? Yeah, Is it 13, one? 13, 13 not, to 1. Not okay, on the left. 13 yeah. to 1. 1 out of 11, not on the left. No, on the left. No. 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 For every one conservative yes. professor, some say 11, some say 13. But for every conservative pref professor, 11 to Correct. 13 are on the left. Yeah. But You're I, saying the same thing. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, and I went to college. I, I, I'm glad I went to college. I did the whole college experience. That's great. I, I'll tell you what. If I just entered the real world at 18, probably would have made a handful of mistakes. It's sort of easy to have that four-year window of effing up and making effing, effing mistakes, which is fine. But at the end of the day, uh, this is a major decision. But besides getting married and having kids, What's the next biggest decision that a young person has to make? College. Going to college. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, if you're going to spend a quarter million dollars of student loan debt, uh, you need to really think about that. And at the end of the day, this comes down to the bottom line. What's the bottom line? Um, what's the ROI on you going to college? Now, I don't want to be shitting on college. If you can get into an Ivy League school, if you can get into a great school, if you can get into a state school, if you can get your college paid for, if you get free tuition, if you get a scholarship, go for it. But... 
if you're just going to some small liberal arts school outside of state that you're paying out of state tuition, you're paying 50 grand a year to get some basket weaving education. It's like, what's the ROI on that, Hoss? And that's something that you really need to consider. So, 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 so far, I'm going to go to the next story. So far, there's a few things that we got. One, uh, disruption, which he's talking about. Two, is the value the same as it was before? Three, the woke, which is scaring parents out. And four, I'm going to just start making money right now. Why do I need to go to college? I can make money online creating content, doing this. There's so many different ways to make money. This is all bad signs for colleges. And they're not helping themselves as they get woker no and way. woker yeah. and woker. Mm -hmm. And Pat, my question to you is about what, uh, why are they all like bowing down and like letting these, the whole woke ideology, the whole trend. How is this small minority taking over? And because think about it, Pat, they're not stopping. Companies like we've been talking about, uh, Dylan Mulvaney, they tried it with Bud Light. Guess what? Failed. I am finally Part convinced. What's happening? No, it's, it's not the colleges, man. It's, it's everybody. Not the college. No, no, it's not the colleges. The, the, you, know, you know how we always go back to, you know, who's the they? Yes. Who's the they? Who's the they? You they know, all this stuff. We the got road. the man in the house. Your seat's right here. Uh, uh, so who's the they, who's the they, you know, who's the they, who the, who the people are here that are the power. You want anything? You're good. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. So it, 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 that, that's the they, that's the they isn't the college. No, the they is colleges need these big endowments to get the monies. So for them that are getting the big endowments, the college money themselves, they have to kind of, uh, uh, abide by what they want them to do. And if you don't, you're replaceable. Who got you the job? So think about it. Who placed you in this university to have that job? That same person that placed you in that university, deemed whatever the job is, they can take you out. Your loyalty isn't to the students. Mm -hmm. Your loyalty isn't to the kids. Loyalty has changed. Loyalty has changed from CEOs of S&P 500 companies and university deans to students and parents to now funders hmm. and where the money is coming from. And if you don't, you don't provide loyalty to those guys, you lose your position, your job, your money, all of that stuff. So, And there's one small, not so small thing, the whole concept of student loans. They've been able to raise tuitions at astronomical rates and not worry about the consumer, Pat. The consumer is the student, right? The consumer is the student, and the second consumer is the parents that are paying the bill for the student for the uh, student. So student loans have been there so that they can raise tuition and the college says, just get the student loan. And who's backing those loans? The United States government. I still think though, going to a, going to a school, like, and I know which school that you were talking about, f within the first five minutes, for, for them to say, hey, listen, we do gender reaffirming surgery. We could, if you have a crotch, we'll chop it up. What the? What are we talking about? By the way, How, what about the so, school? So the other day, we went and we watched this new movie by Sebastian Maniscalco and Robert De Niro. Okay, how was it? It's freaking funny as hell. Okay. It's actually a very good movie. All right. Within the first five minutes, a gay couple's getting married. Okay, yeah. within the first five minutes, Tico looks at me, and I took my dad. He's eighty-one years old. Yeah. Okay, and he wants to watch the Nero movie. Tico doesn't like this kind of stuff. He wants to leave. Yeah. So we stay for dad. Two other times they had the, you know, examples of what happens in there to touch the, you know, ESG score to be right. So these guys are going out there raising $50 million for a movie like this. And the guys are saying, we'll give you $50 million as long as your cast is this, 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 that. No. As long as your script has this, we'll approve it. It's no longer who you think they're loyal to. It's changed. Anyways, let's move on to a different topic. Can I let's add one on. thing since you're a stats guy? You got guy. 20 seconds. There you go. Here's, since you're a stats guy, this is something you should consider. Tell something us. we consider valuetainment. Because we believe so heavily in stats, you've seen the stats where a high school graduate over their lifetime will make a million dollars. Yeah. A college graduate over their lifetime will make $2 million. A master's degree, BA in everything with that, will make $3 million. So that's highlighting the upside of college. They, they'll, they'll kind of be like, yeah, don't worry about the debt stuff. Don't worry about all the nonsense. Don't worry about the gender reaffirming surgery. Don't worry about that. Just follow the money. But if there were stats out there, which I'm sure we could put together on, all right, if you go this route, not the non-college route, the entrepreneur route, this is how much money you can make. The Elon Musk route, if you will, the Jeff Bezos route, the Mark Zuckerberg route, dropping out of college, that's something that I think should be highlighted more and not pushed to the side. I agree. All right, I want to talk about the most uh, important story in the economy today. Testosterone levels plummeting <laughs> in young men due to porn consumption as linked to social isolation shows real problem. The Sun, young men's social isolation and retreat from society are linked to changing norms 
and discomfort would redefine masculinity. However, studies indicate that plummeting testosterone levels in young men, possibly influenced by excessive porn consumption, may, con may also contribute to their desire to separate from society. Testosterone levels play a crucial role beyond sexual desire, impacting body and facial hair, muscle mass, bone density, uh, fertility, mood, and social anxiety. Excessive consumption of pornography is associated with low reproductive hormone levels in men, which can contribute in reduced testosterone levels uh, and potential uh, social isolation. Uh, natural way to boost testosterone level include improving sleep quality, getting sunlight exposure, and taking vitamin D supplements, consuming omega-3 fish fatty acids, and engaging in strength training exercises. Last night, I had a great time with these guys at Fresh and Fit with Myron. You guys are freaking amazing at what you do. Thanks Myron, coming. what do you think about this story, masturbation, porn, <laughs> testosterone level? What do you have to say about that? Yeah, um, it's, it's a combination of things. And I was actually just writing some notes as you were speaking about it. I would say there's a couple things that are contributing to this. One is women are more successful now than ever before. So a lot of guys feel like they can't compete or they can't measure up. You got... You know, an influx of pornography that's huge. You can get it for free anywhere, anytime on your phone at the, you know, drop of a hat. Video games, right, become more and more immersive, more and more interactive. They've grown in popularity significantly. It's probably one of the most uh, popular ways of entertainment nowadays. They're beating out movies and television. Then you got obesity, right? Being fat is fairly acceptable in the West nowadays. It's okay to be fat. Um, you also have guys in general that are just lazy. Thanks to the technology and everything else that we have nowadays, people aren't as social. Guys don't feel the need to get out there and get to know women anymore. A lot of guys are socially awkward. Um, you know, this is through the rise of social media, dating apps, etc. There's a lot of guys that have issues, right, where they're good looking guys and they're able to get garner attention from women, but they don't know how to speak or convey themselves properly because they don't have the adequate social skills where they've been speaking to people for a, a good amount of time and learning, you know, certain social cues, how to speak properly, cadence, speaking from an active voice versus a passive voice when speaking to women because women typically respond very favorably to the active voice versus the passive voice. So all these little things, right, might seem like small little insulated, insulated incidents, but if you add them all together, it snowballs and creates kind of what we have, like what they call it the lost bar generation. Um, so in general... All of these things play into, and there's more too, but those are just some of the ones I could think off the top Tom, of my head. Tom, from, from your, very insightful, by the way, and, and if, you're, if you are not uh, familiar with Fresh and Fit, I'm sure our audience is because we had my run on before, and these guys are about to do a live event this Friday from 6 to 10 p.m. at the 5990 Live Building. Uh, uh, if you want to find out more about the tickets, we're going to put the link below, right? 5990live.com. This Friday, uh, Adam, Tom, I'm sorry, Adam, uh, Tom, Fresh and Fit, Tom. very weird dynamic with Tom. There's going to be a lot of ladies there. There's going to be a very different kind of a messaging, but you're going to be entertained. And maybe if you brought Tom, that would change Myron the dynamics. Myron and Walt. I'm gonna, My, Tom, no offense. I'm going to pick Walt. Well, is Walt going to be there? Buddy. Because Walt yeah, doesn't yeah. love He's, he's going to yeah. be there. I don't yeah, want yeah, so to drag him away. Yeah. That, <laughs> I don't want to drag him away. <laughs> Tom, what are your thoughts? Uh, 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 you know, because... You're, uh, uh, you, you and I are from a, uh, you know, different generation. We got three, gen we, no, we got two generations here is what we got, right? If we really think about it. Um, porn back in the days when you were 14, okay? That's VHS. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that's kind of like, hey, dog, what do you no. got? <laughs> it, it was, you know what he's doing? Like all no, those no, yeah. going News versus clippings. today. What, what, what do you know from like your, your perspective on how bad porn can be for young boys? Well, first of all, what he, uh, Myron was talking about is talking about is social isolation, and we have become a socially isolated society. So I'm going to touch porn last, but I'm, I'm going to touch this touch first. Everything, touch everything, Tom. Tom yeah. Oh, brother. Here <laughs> touch go. it, Tom. I said the word. But what he brought up was video games and the internet itself makes us more isolationist for entertainment, and it's, and it's immersive, and it's distracting, and hours of a session go by. That leads to us being very sedentary, which leads a sedentary life directly leads to, like, you know, you know, obesity and health issues and what they're pointing out, not getting out uh, side for vitamin D and sunlight exposure. And there's a couple of um, great programs that were like the, uh, the challenge, like 60 day programs. And part of that program is 60 minutes outside, taking a walk around lunch, brisk walk, uh, getting sunlight. So we, all of this is coming together. What Myron just said is dead on what's happening, you know, uh, on porn. That's even worse is it, it objectifies women and it perfects women. There's, it's like you're, you're objectifying women by what you're looking at. And then you're only looking at like 
people who are in amazing shape. And so that also creates this false fantasy and, and, and leaves men, you know, not capable to engage in regular relationships. The other part I look at it, add all of this up, add everything that we up and, and look at this. Hey, Pat, when you grew up, did you know the names of your neighbors across the street and on either side of you? Yes, you did. So did my mom. So did my dad. Today, I have to proactively go meet my neighbors. People usually don't know their neighbors. And it's because the American society, all of this porn and everything else has made us more isolated people. If you ask someone, how many really close friends do you have? Do you know the, your neighbor across the street and what their situation is? Do you know your neighbors on either side of you? Would you trust one of them to take care of your dog if you're out of town? We've also become, I'm interested in what Myron thinks about this, more isolated as a people and a culture. And it's, it's, it's negative. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We've seen the stats out there that men are just becoming weaker. I think testosterone levels have dropped 1% every year since the 1980s. So in the last 40 years or so, testosterone levels have dropped 40%. You've highlighted how men can't even do as much weightlifting they used to before. So look, rather than highlight all the negatives, we can go down a, a litany of list of what's going on with men. What can you do to basically inc increase your testosterone? So you can do the natural stuff, get the fuck out of the house, work out, get some sunlight, sleep well, eat well, do what you have to do. There's also testosterone supplements that you can actually take, TRT, this type of things. We've actually had a recent sponsor called Turkesterone that basically helps men increase their testosterone. I think at the end of the day, you have a choice to make as a man. Do you want to kind of go down this feminization of men path or do you want to man up and become the best version of yourself? And the men, you know, only probably 20% of men are actually going to meet us uh, at that point. And uh, you're right. Yeah. The, um, oh, sorry. No, no. I mean, that's essentially the end of the day. And if you just basically want to get feminized in this modern femme centric society, you know, uh, there's plenty of avenues for you for that. But if you want to listen to the right people and have the right people in your ear and have the right coaches and leaders and mentors around you, uh, it is possible to be a man in today's society. And this is something that I kind of get hit on a lot because, you know, people always say, oh, Myron, you're really critical of women, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, well, you clearly don't watch the daytime show because I'm even more critical of the men. Mm -hmm. And what I've said a lot of times is we need to bring bullying back. Right. And I know, oh, my God, that's so controversial. The reason why I say that is because. Bullying is a very natural way of letting you know that you're inadequate with yep. your peers, right? And if they tell you, hey, you're fat or hey, you're a loser, etc." A lot of the self-improvements that I've made right throughout my adolescence into my adulthood came from people bullying me and people say, oh, but it's trauma, it's bad. No, you need that. You need to be smacked in the face sometimes and learn you're not good enough right now. You need to become better. And the thing is now we have a participation trophy society where just by showing up, you're rewarded. And quite frankly, that's not enough. It's not about just showing up. It's about being consistent and showing up every day and doing it correctly. But we live in this world nowadays where people, quite frankly, are soft, right? When I say things like stop being, I don't know, I don't want to swear, right? Because we're, we're in the morning, you know, stop being a pussy, right? They're like, oh, you're uh, misogynist, hater, bro. toxic, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, you need, men need trauma to grow. They yeah. need it, right? I've always said trauma builds men, but it destroys women. And the reason for that is because by the time you're old enough and you want to actually date a woman, et cetera, she's looking for those battle scars. She's looking for you to have that experience. She's looking for you to have beaten that adversity. She's looking for you to have made yourself into something. The only way you're going to be made into something is by going through something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Quite frankly, we live in a society now where the guys are just soft. My brother, for example, right? Going back to the college thing that you guys were talking about before. I was at his graduation last week. Uh, I had to take a few days off to go up to Connecticut. Uh, and, you know, Southern Connecticut State University, that's where he graduated from. And during the speech, right, they were talking about being all-inclusive. And, oh, yeah, it's about this is a happy, harmonious campus and all this other crap. And I'm like, damn, I graduated college, you know, 2013, about 10 years ago out of Northeastern. And they were starting to get woke back back then. But now it's on a whole other level. And not only that, college college campuses have become more and more expensive, right? When I went to Northeastern, it was around 40K. I think it's probably like closer to 50 to 70K nowadays. So you got all these things working in tandem to, quite frankly, make men weak, right? We have this soft-ass society where we're not telling them that they need to actually go out there and achieve and become somebody. And then we also have... The video games, the obesity, the mediocrity being socially accepted. Oh, it's okay. You're fine the way that you are. No, it's fucking not okay. The only people that are accepted however they come are women, 
<laughs> not men. You must become a somebody as a man. And I think that's why our podcast becomes so popular because we're telling guys there is a burden of performance. You have to go out there and do something. Being fat is unacceptable. Being stupid is unacceptable. Being mediocre, mediocre is unacceptable. You can't be saved like a woman can for being pretty. You must get out there and become a fucking somebody. But the problem is that we don't bully the guys enough. We don't tell them that they're losers. We don't tell them that they're fat. We don't tell them that they're stupid. We need to go back to letting people know that they're inadequate and then they'll go ahead and measure you know, up. You know, it's wild that he's saying this. Somebody could be listening to this and saying, what can kind of a freaking message is that <laughs> i grew up bullying and this this that but i will tell you you know i, I over the years <clears throat> uh, running a sales team i recruit a lot of uh, young men and young women okay and we we help them become agents sheena sapala who right now you know they 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 do very well for them so they make a couple million a year and their business does around 40 million 30 million a year okay she played sports, she played softball, she played softball for college, and she just got inducted to the Hall of Fame of her high school in Sacramento. Oh, wow. Congrats, best. Sheena. Yeah. Congrats. And you know what's crazy? You, I can sit down with her and give her feedback and challenge her. She takes it. She has no problem, okay? Uh, I can give feedback to guys that are in the military. They can take it. No problem. But if I notice the guys that I have the hardest time with giving feedback, Guess what? They never played sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so wild. I know the names. Obviously, I will not say it. But God forbid if you give those guys feedback. They're so hurt by it. Mm -hmm. There's, that's not the way that works with me. That's not the way that this works for me. I want the feedback to be this way. I don't. Okay. Totally fine. But the reality of it is that guy missed out on the opportunity of being coached under somebody that kicked their ass. Get off your ass. Run for it. Let's go. Like I saw uh, Dylan was playing for this baseball team, and their coach was like eight years old. It's like, what are you guys doing? Get out there. I want you to try harder. You guys are being sloppy. What are you guys doing on the pass here? Your teammates hitting here. Pay attention to the guy. And this one guy was a former player. And I'm watching saying, wow, he just put him in check like this. Well, if you do that for three, four, five years, and then eventually, you know what you think it is? You think that's normal. Mm -hmm. So when somebody later on is like, I'm not offended by it. You should see my coach back in the days, years ago. There's, there's concepts about being around intimidating, tough environments like this toughens you up. And uh, if you stand up, so I think you got a very good point there. It happens in business all the time, by the way. Well, Pat, do you guys, do you guys think it's like happening intentionally? My mind, like, like there's a concerted effort. Alpha males, they're trying to get rid of them. Look what happens with Tay and everybody, like people like you, they don't want People like us that are alphas out there, like it's almost like something is happening to make us soft. Because like, well, if, if let's just say aliens wanted to come attack, you know, you have to you have to, you have to get rid of the strong, virile, crazy attacking men. Because we are getting soft as shit, bro. Like yeah. America's just, absolutely. It's just because now feelings are more important than anything else. Like you said, I, I know what people are thinking about the bullying, but you need a little like a push. Mm -hmm. If I say somebody's morbidly obese, there was a girl that couldn't. Walk through the aisle in an airplane. Yeah, That's what she said. That. We yeah. remember we talked about Adam, and you know she was like, "This is discrimination against me." They should Air give me an extra seat. She's like, "No, make the planes bigger." Right. Like I want a big, huge, big ass Victim plane. Mentality. So it's like I, I feel like. Do you feel like my like? It's are they doing it? It's is there a power that's behind this to make us all? Really, really soft. Well, yeah. When you when you emasculate the men, well, then you can take over mm -hmm. because the thing is with men is that you know since the beginning of time. Me and Andrea have had talks about this. Like, since the beginning of time, men are prepared to fight to defend their belief systems. Women are not, right? There's a reason why they would kill off the men and take the women and the children as <laughs> yeah, prisoners. Yeah. And, you know, they're doing that now, but they're doing it much more intelligently, right? And if you look at, and this kind of goes into other things as well. If you look at, you know, now when we have wars with other countries or whatever, we're not going into actual physical confrontation with them like world war ii no what are we doing we're doing proxy wars we're doing what we're doing right now we're ukraine and russia right we're sending in spies we're collecting information on other countries we're getting uh, classified information um given to us or whatever stealing information stealing secrets so everything is kind of done surreptitiously now and uh destroying the men is also being done right now because if you destroy the strong men who's going to question and stop you because guys like ask, ask questions we talked about this yesterday on our show and questions are annoying for the authorities mm -hmm. so <clears throat> Anytime you're able to question or push back or rebel, that's an issue for them. I'll say one more thing because I fully agree with the bullying component. Yeah, I played sports my whole life, played college football, basketball, the whole, the whole deal. There's, you know, talk about locker room talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, nothing is as vicious as a 12th grade high school locker room. Oh my mm -hmm. god! If you ain't up to par, mm -hmm. and you know, if I look back at the coaches I've had in my life, the coaches who were the the the, the guy that you're like, fuck this guy, but I hate the 
those teams always did the best. 100%. Because he demanded accountability. And some guys don't want that, but at, at some point you need to get in line. Last point. Talk about bullying. That's peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah. I also think there are lack of male role models these days. We talk about single uh, single parent households. Yeah. Uh, something that's plaguing America. The welfare state relying on the government. Um, yesterday before the Fresh Fit podcast, I actually was taking care of my nephew. Ten-year-old guy. We are playing... Uh, football. This kid is the king of excuses. Every time I throw him the ball, <laughs> oh, the, the lace hit my I dropped it. Oh, the sun got my I, I, At one point, I, got, I said, shut the F up. Either catch the ball or say my bad. That's it. You're allowed two words. My bad or catch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> and you saw. <laughs> that's it. I, it's gonna I'm telling bad. you. And, it, I mean, I trained him like a coach. I'm not, like, I spend, you know, Maybe a day a week with him, and we spend an hour playing football. And you know the most amazing thing? You're talking about a kid who plays YouTube, video game. He's a kid. He goes, this is better than any video game or any <laughs> YouTube video. I loved it. I go, that's right, kid. And I was hard as hell on the kid. I said, catch the ball or, or just say the, my bad. Don't but, say but, anything but else. But to be fair, he's, not, he's actually not accustomed to that style no, at all. Yeah. At all. Mm -hmm. So that's a shocker when it happens yes. the first time. So kudos to him yeah. for yeah. reacting the way he did and not running crying about it. Yeah. No, I mean, I do coach him from time to time. This isn't the first time, but I just was fed up with the excuses. But this ta this talks about, you know, what do you call it? The, the trophy uh, culture? Yeah. The participation yeah, trophy? The, yeah. Exactly. I could have just been like, hey, man, I'm happy you're out here trying no. to catch the ball. And I Catch want to say the goddamn this ball, Randy Moss. Quick. Iron sharpens iron. I have vivid memories in my childhood. I grew up with uh, with Jordan Reed. He played for the 49ers and his brother David Reed. Tight end. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I remember. I uh, grew up with them in New Britain, Connecticut. And I remember as a kid getting bullied all the time because David was a little bit older than us. Jordan was around my age. We used to play them in basketball, pick up basketball, and they'd always used to beat us, play football, baseball, play all these sports. And we always used to get smoked by the older kids, but it incentivized us yeah. to wake up early, go to the basketball court, practice in the morning, train, get better, et cetera, because iron sharpens iron. We're like, we're going to beat them. They keep talking mm -hmm. smack. And we eventually did beat them in one pickup game and then lost <laughs> to the others. But the point is, you is remember that, that one it motivated game. us. Yeah. It really motivated us to get out there and be better. And I don't think young <laughs> men have that same stimuli that they used to have before. You don't even see kids outside yeah. playing anymore at the basketball courts or going outside doing anything. They're more concerned with you know subscribing to OnlyFans and whacking off to porn or playing video games, etc. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have the fattest kids we've ever had. Kids aren't outside playing sports. And I think sports are, honestly, nowadays, if you're a parent, you need to enroll your kids in something, whether I don't care if it's music, sports, whatever it is, because they learn discipline from that. They learn how to deal with other people. They learn teamwork. They understand that there's a chain of command with a coach. You learn so many life lessons from participating in sports that it's insurmountable. You're not going to get that those type of life lessons in anything else. And you learn how to not be a bitch. I want to <laughs> I want to tell you a story. My dad in the house has one trophy, okay, that he kept <laughs> since I was 14. Do you know the story or no? No, I can't since wait. Since I was 14 years old, he's kept this one trophy. So I'm like, listen, why did you keep this trophy? He says, well, it reminds me of what happened that one night in Echo Park in, uh, in uh, L.A. So if you don't know Echo Park, Echo Park wasn't the safest area in the 90s. It's like it's, it's a terrible place, actually, yeah. in the 90s. So I'm playing in this league. It's, a, it's a, a troubled teenager's league called the Century City Basketball Association, something like that, yeah. okay? And one day we're playing against these other guys. Four of our players don't show up. We only have five. And we're playing against guys. It's uh, the, the other group. It's Blood, Crip. We got Diamond. Anyways, we, so yeah. the other guy, <laughs> helicopter show up shooting. It was a pretty bad day. But that game, we lost by 101 points. <laughs> you know what I love about that game? We, I scored six points. I'll never forget exactly how many points. Your I scored highest six scoring points. game ever. It's man. the highest score. <laughs> trust me, that's a highlight reel for me of the bank. Oh, my God. So we lost by 101 points. And there was a small little, you know, the, 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 they gave the bigger trophy for the guys that win. They gave us a small little. No, my dad kept it. He says, it's to show this game the way you lost to keep you humble for the rest of your life. Wow. How bad you guys got your asses whooped oh my God. by these guys. It was phenomenal. We laugh about it till today. But it's right. You need those types of moments to keep you humble in life and in business. If you don't, a fall is coming around. We need to bring that and trophy and put it right here too. on the, uh, on the mantle. That trophy, that trophy is uh, one of the most important trophies. One more thing I want to say, too, about why sports and activities are so important, for, especially for guys in their adolescent years, uh, women, too, is because it keeps you away from doing stupid things. I can't yeah. tell you how many times 
I was offered weed growing up as a kid. Or, hey, you want to go drink or you want to do something stupid. And I always said no. Why? Because I had to go play basketball. Or when I was in college, I was a Division one athlete. I was a rower. Uh, that kept me away from doing a lot of stupid things. I never smoked weed in my life. Didn't drink like that in college. Didn't party like that because I knew I had to be up at 5 o'clock in the morning to train on the Charles River. So, like, sports creates discipline, mm -hmm. which then forces you to not be involved in a lot of stupid things that can get you jammed up. You know what's so crazy that you say that? So... All throughout high school, I was that dude that was like, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I'm that guy, like, no, mm -hmm. I'm an athlete, football, basketball, all county, the whole deal. I get to college. And all my football player teammates are like, we're going out drinking, we're partying, <laughs> smoke this, try this. I was like, this is the antithesis of what I was looking for, guys. Yeah. But you are right that, that yeah. college does keep you out of credit, uh, keep you out of trouble. Yeah. How many guys that get inducted into the Hall of Fame that say, thank God, for my mom, for enrolling me in sports. If not, I would have been gangbanging yeah. out here. Oh, it course. kept me away from a lot yeah. of stupidity growing up in, in New Britain, Connecticut, which isn't the best place to grow up, right? It was a 50% dropout rate in New Britain High School. And then going into college, that kept me away from, like, you know, partying and doing a bunch of stupid stuff. And I was just focused on sports, and it just kept me focused. Myron, I went to, I went to New Britain High School, and I'm with the Hurricanes. Oh, I'm shit. From New, I'm, hey, I'm from Yonkers, nice. but I was raised in New Britain. Nice. Nice. Talk nice. I was raised That's from late. Yonkers. Are you we joking? Moved, I swear to God, we were born in Yonkers. We were Syrians. We moved. My father got a job in Connecticut. I'm on New Britain High School, 1996. I graduated Holy from New Britain. Holy crap. Oh, we got to talk, bro. Yeah, yeah, wow. That is banana of yeah. all high school. When you said New Britain, I go, who the yeah. hell knows about hard hit in New Britain, Yeah, bro? man. Hard, hard hit in New Britain. Brent, bro. And I respect the new Brit Nights said, out here. Not a good neighborhood. Drive my uh, Miguel de Jesus was shot. My dad, I'll never forget, Myron. My father dropped us off in front of the school, uh, seven, seven something in the morning. As he's driving off, this guy was a Latin king, standing in front of the school. He just got back from a suspension. Car pulls up, shoots him dead in front of us. They drive. That's the school that we went to. Yeah. We had one day off, and they brought us right back into that school. Yeah, because New Britain, people think Connecticut is like soft, but the thing is, is that all the most of the money in Connecticut is concentrated in the south. Um, Yep. Southwest, going towards New York City. Yeah, but if you go into Central Connecticut or Northern Connecticut, it's, it's not so nice. You think of especially uh, Hartford you County. You think of Connecticut. That's you crazy. think of hedge country. Yeah, that's what you yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Well, Greenwich, 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 yeah, Greenwich, yeah, Greenwich, yeah, Greenwich is, is nice. from Connecticut, yeah. but yeah. like Bridgeport and New Haven and bro. Oh, we gonna yeah. talk Central after, Connecticut. Yeah, it's we're nice. gonna go start yeah, a fight yeah. in the office. Fuck <laughs> okay. it. Me and you, bro. Let's, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk economy. Consumer debt passed a 17 trillion for the first time. Despite slight in mortgage demand, this is a CNBC story. I'm going to read two stories together because they have a lot to do with each other. So $17 trillion, increasing by nearly $150 billion the first quarter of 2023, despite a decline in mortgage demand. Total indebtedness rose by $2.9 trillion since pre-pandemic levels in 2019. New mortgage orientations, including refinancing, hit the lowest level since 2014 with a significant increase, decrease of 35% compared to the previous quarter. The decline in home loans can be attributed to higher interest rates, which reach uh, around 6.4% following multiple rate increases by central banks. The mortgage refinancing boom fueled by lower interest rates has come to an end. CNBC. However, its impact will be felt for years. Years. We're years. talking years on top of years. 40 years. <laughs> Myron, they love the way I speak. English, yeah. Just so you know that. Oh With God. millions of homeowners <laughs> having refinanced their mortgages during the pandemic period, despite interest, rising interest rates, mortgage foreclosures remain low, oh while delinquency rates granted comes Okay, so now this leads to the other one. Watch this here. 401k. It's more expensive to live, and workers are tapping into the 401k's New York Times story. Uh, uh, ex, uh, uh, Americans are increasing tapping into retirement accounts, cost of living accounts. Experts uh, uh, warned that the number of workers marking, making hardship withdrawals from their 401k's could rise as people struggle with insufficient short-term savings and face unexpected expenses. Tom, thoughts on these two stories? Well, it's it's a simple... It's a simple tragedy. Um, we covered a story here uh, one week ago that credit card debt had just touched $1 trillion. That's just revolving credit card debt. And it was a bounce up from about 800 in the middle of pandemic. And the stimulus checks had actually taken that down to about 720. So it moved almost $300 billion just credit card debt. And what is happening here? is no one wants to talk about it. You can spin the economy and say, you know, Joe Biden's doing a great job. Look at all this checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. What's the reality? People, inflation is killing people and the 
They are they've run their credit cards up to a trillion dollars worth. Total consumer debt now passes 17 trillion for the first time, even though mortgage demand is down. Why is mortgage demand down? Because mortgage right now, I think it's 6.87% this morning. If you wanted a 30 year fixed mortgage on a half a million dollar house and you've got solid credit, it's almost 7%. So you're, you're getting squeezed. So what do you turn to? If you don't have a credit card and you're getting toward the limit, what do you turn to? You turn to your 401k. Scary and check God. this out. The, the, I disagreed with this when it happened, but buried in that story from the New York Times is the Secure 2.0 Act. The Secure 2.0 Act, you know what it did? This is your government doing this. They want, they want people to be dependent on the government. They do not want financial independence. Secure 2.0 Act, it allows people to make a withdrawal that they call is a security withdrawal or a financial hardship withdrawal. They're making it easier for people in their 40s and 50s to tap into the 401k because the government knows what's going on. They knows what's going on with the, with the credit cards. This shows you just how bad things are right now because people are saying, well, what did they do before? What did they do before? Why are they doing 401ks now? You know what? People with homes used to get a HELOC. What can't you do now if interest rates are uh, almost 7%? Add two percentage points for a HELOC, right, Pat? That's a little bit more for the second mortgage for the HELOC. Well, that makes a HELOC 9% if you've got equity and you can do it, and they can't. The bank looks at it and says, I'm sorry, you're kind of maxed out here. I can't, I can't give you another 50 grand on a credit line HELOC that you're going to use for living expenses. So what this is showing is just how tough it is on the American middle class right now. Mm -hmm. It's tougher than tough. I think there's two parts of this story. There's the macro and the micro. The macro, I actually don't give a shit. I'll tell you why. Uh, every year we see that these numbers get inflated and inflated. I remember back in 2008 during the uh, economic crisis, uh, what was the bailout? $800 billion? There was nothing with the word T in it. Nothing with the or word tarp. trillion. That's right, TARP. There's not meaning there was the, like the first stimulus, $2.4 billion. So, sorry, $2.4 trillion. The CARES Act, and then there was multiple stimulus checks, trillion. We've seen the U.S. debt go from 10, 15, 20. We're at, what, $31 trillion? Inflation rising. These macro numbers are just going to get larger and larger and larger and larger. And that's something just we need to understand and get comfortable with. Not saying I'm happy about it. Not saying anyone should be. But that's the reality that we're in today. We're now working with trillions no longer. But it used to be cool to be a millionaire. Millionaire. Who gives a shit about that? Yeah. Now you're a billionaire. Oh, billionaire. I know a couple billionaires. Now we're talking about Elon Musk maybe becoming a trillionaire. We're now in trillionaire territory guys billionaire ain't cool anymore millionaire is like broke boy at this point and you need to understand that as far as the micro goes um we've seen that over since covid something that we've all learned the terminology the k-shaped economy the rich have gotten richer and the poor have gotten poorer which one are you because if you're in the middle class if you ain't improving you're digressing so you know i feel bad for the middle class for sure times are not easy inflation has been a mess consumer price index has been tough to deal with Vinny does videos on the price of eggs. He, instead of buying his girl an engagement ring, he bought her a fucking egg. egg. And she <laughs> loved it. She loved it. <laughs> Omelets yeah. on Vinny. But it, it just, at the end of the day, this comes down to personal accountability, personal finance, and 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 handling what you got to handle as a man. Is there any, like, uh, sorry, not to get no, you No, 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 please. What, like, is, so, Tom, we hear all these facts, and I, I mean, we're not in government, so, they, you know, we don't really know, but how can we, what, what, what can they do to like stop this, like to slow Who's this shit there? down, or like the government, or you know, like is it the presidency, or like because obviously it, didn't, it wasn't happening years ago. It's happening hardcore now, Pat. What's the why is it going like that so bad? And people you, are broke as shit. And I'm gonna let in the Pat answer case? this, but uh, like, it, what could they be doing different? You Pat? need a bad ass sob who's gonna say, listen, you, you, the people, the populace. You ain't going to like what I have to say. That's what I want to hear. But like, we need you... to do some control damage to this country that's what right I, now. That's what I want to hear, Unfortunately, that is a not a winning message. Well, Unfortunately, you want to keep piling on the debt, and they've all done it. Of course. Bush. Of course. Obama. Yeah. Trump. Biden. They all can get the blame. They mm. all can get it. You need a badass SOB who looks like The Rock, talks like The Rock, but doesn't necessarily act like oh, The Rock. But, so, but, but Adam, and that comes in and says, we need to clean up our act. So, so, all right, so Adam, let's just say Trump comes in. Let's say Trump wins the nomination. He comes in, he wins. What is he going to do? What would he... Well, would you think his he'll track be record, he's already put on $5 trillion of debt to the economy. So, I don't so know he wouldn't do shit. Guy. So he wouldn't do anything. I'm not saying what he'll do his second term, but Stop. I'm saying based on his first. You, the, 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 every time you say that, 
give the disclaimer. That's during COVID relief when it was a shit show and mm-hmm. nobody had a clue what to do. So when you're explaining that, it's important to put things into the... Same the other day, Biden, Joe though. Biden put a post that no one in the history of mankind has created more jobs than him. Which was and, bullshit. Which is bullshit. So, but, yeah. but that's also bullshit. So we have to call out the bullshit and on all sides. I get what you're saying. What I will say to you from my standpoint is he's right. We've talked about this many times. The right things to campaign on today are unfortunately not winnable, okay? Mm -hmm. To get out there and give the message of, here's what we need. You need to go, no, no, no. No, the other guy's giving me free stuff. You're not. Why am I going to vote for you? I'm not going to vote for you. Like this whole debt ceiling negotiation they're having right now, we'll go into the story next, is they're negotiating about how much money they can spend. Like just think about it, how much money they can spend. And one side is saying, let's spend less. The other side is saying, no, we got to spend more, right? Okay. The other part also in this thing here is the fact that as an individual, the more independent people there is, the less they want the debt ceiling to be raised. The more independent earners there is, the less they rely on somebody to take care of them financially. Think about who is voting for more entitlement programs. Actually think about, do you need entitlement programs? Do you need entitlement programs? Do I need entitlement programs? Do we need entitlement programs? No. Who with a job needs entitlement programs? Actually think about that question. Who who is taking care of their family, their wives, their kids, their husbands, their responsibilities? Who wants entitlement programs? The only people that want entitlement programs is what? The people that are not wanting to do the legwork, not wanting to go out there and improve, not wanting to get a new skill set. So as long as they're, as long as they increase Everybody's trying to increase their subscribership. The left, they need to increase the amount of people that need entitlement programs. The more people need entitlement programs, the more relevant the Democratic Party will be. The more people increase that don't need entitlement programs, people are going to one day wake up and say, I'm sorry, step aside, guys. You don't need to solve my problems. I got it. You don't need to take care of my financial responsibilities. That's on me. So, But that's going to take 20 years mm-hmm. to fix, and it's going to take – that philosophy staying on point. Today, we're living at a time where it's like, well, look how rich that guy is. Look how rich this is. Look how rich that is. It's so confusing where they want people relying on the government. And they've done such a good job at that recruiting so many people on entitlement programs. It's very hard. The moment you start giving things away for to people for free, like this is the one thing we talked about on the podcast. I don't know if you remember that one book, uh, uh, Toxic, uh, uh, what's the name of the book? Toxic um, Charity. Do you remember when we talked about Toxic Charity? Yeah, we yeah. talked The toxic charity, there's five things, right? Five phases of toxic charity when you give. You give once, you elicit appreciation. You give twice, you create anticipation. You give three times, you create expectation, okay? You give a four time, it becomes entitlement. The fifth time, you establish dependency, and I would add a sixth thing. The moment you stop giving, you become an enemy. So one more time, you give once, you elicit appreciation. Hey, man, thank you so much for that. That was great. You didn't have to. You give a second time, oh, okay, cool. So it's kind of like you're going to do it again. I'm anticipating. You give a third time, it's expectation. Where is it? You give a fourth time, now you're entitled. Here, let's go. You give a fifth time, you establish dependency, and you stop doing it, you're an enemy. So imagine if the political party that says, hey, guys, moving forward, we're not going to give anything. You're the number one enemy of the people (laughs) to the entitled people. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't want to say issue. this too real quick, uh, speaking from the, the home side, because as you guys, your audience may or may not know, I'm a real estate investor. I have uh, four properties down here in Florida and another nine up in Connecticut. And yeah, I mean, I remember buying houses back in like 2020, 2021. I was getting interest rates at like the threes, the fours. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. And, you know, it was a bidding war. I was competing with everyone. I was competing with investors, people trying to buy a home, first time home buyers, et cetera. Now interest rates, right, for an investor are closer to eight percent. At six point four, if you want to buy a home, if you want to buy as a, your primary residence, but if you want to buy as an investor, you're getting, you know, seven, mid sevens, eight percent interest rate, even with good credit. So now it's worked out good for me because now I don't have as many competitors. But going back to what you guys said, who does this hurt mostly? The middle class, because now it's not. It doesn't make sense for them to buy a house because it's too goddamn expensive with interest rates. So, I mean, do I see the interest rates coming down? They're fluctuating quite a bit or whatever, and there's ways around it. Maybe you can get an adjustable rate mortgage or you could buy points at closing, which is going to be costly. But 
regardless, it definitely has ostracized the middle class where only pretty much investors are the only ones that can buy a home now. So if you're an investor, it's a great time to get in because you don't have to compete with as many people. But yeah, the interest rates are, are more than doubled. That's why you see BlackRock buying up everything exactly. right Exactly. They're buying up all the single family homes. Can you pull up that entitlement thing one more time? He has a right up there. Okay, gotcha. He has a right up there. It's so funny because we can. that's politically that you're talking about. Um, but this is th this is applicable in any phase of life. So we all know that I used to be in the nightlife world, and I still do that. It's so funny because there's this like I'll give one quick anecdote. Uh, a buddy of mine is a big nightlife promoter, one of the biggest in Miami. He's going back and forth on social media, arguing with a with a woman, Myron. Shocker alert, her. Yeah, probably. And, um, <laughs> and so I was there the night that it happened, and basically the story goes like this: she had to wait in line to get into a club, one of the biggest clubs in Miami, live, uh, for a half hour, okay? The club was packed, sold out, and he lets her in free every single time. Mm -hmm. Her and her girls, they drink free. You know, we talk about number one appreciation. Hey, thanks for letting me in. All my friends really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, anticipation. Hey, we're coming. We'll see you soon. Got you. All good. No worries. Expectation. Hey, I'm here. I'm in line. Where are yep. you? Hey, I'm coming to get you. All right, cool. Entitlement. Hey, where are my free drinks? Uh, dependency. I'm in line. Where are you? The, the, they're posting each other's stories, you know, online. And he likes, he's like, at the end of the day, sorry if I curse. Listen, bitch, I don't owe you anything. Yeah, yeah. I've been letting you and your friends come in for free, drink for free, for years. years, and now you want to come in and act all entitled to the club. Sorry, baby girl, you need to wait. F you, this and that. He's like, all right, well, best of luck out there. But that is a real-life story of entitlement good mentality. Good for him, by the way. Well, yeah. exactly. I say good for him for standing up yes. and saying no. You know, Go figure it out for yourself. There is, Listen, think about the most annoying people in your life. Okay, or when we've been annoying, because we've also been annoying at times. Whether you were eight years old, nine years old, thirteen years old, we've all been part of the annoying camp, or we've been part of the camp where people have annoyed you. Think about who is the most annoying people in your life that drain the best energy out of you. Go to those two or three people. You know exactly who those people are, right? The You're spoiled there. ones. Okay, so let's just say spoiled ones. Number one is what spoiled. Who else are the most annoying people that suck the best? They're, they're, they're always of you. complaining. They're never happy. Okay, this, so uh, got, life, coaches, life owes them everything. Coaches. I got spoiled, complainers, complainers. Victims. Who else would you Victims. Say? Victims. Who else? Ungrateful. Ungrateful. Who else? Rob Garchula. Leeches. <laughs> Leeches. What else? Leeches. What would you say, Myron? Oh, man. I mean, I don't want to sound like an asshole. This is Myron Gaines' opinion only, not the rest <laughs> of the uh, uh, PBD podcast. But this is a lot of modern day women behave this way. And when you were mentioning the club situation, yeah. in my head, I was thinking about, right, right. This is why I say being a gentleman, right? People get controversial take here. I've always said, you know, most girls don't deserve chivalry, chivalry anymore, and women killed chivalry. And the reason why is because it used to be women appreciated nice guys. But nowadays, if you're a nice guy, you're looked at as weak, and they're going to punish you for it. Mm -hmm. So chivalry nowadays is supposed to be earned from women, but guys make the mistake and come in as a nice guy thinking, oh, yeah, let me go this route, and she's going to like me. It doesn't work that way because women are so, uh, how do I say this? They're the, um, they don't appreciate nice genuine gestures for men anymore you know what i mean it's they get it's it all expected. the time it's expected nowadays yeah. thanks to the internet it's simps it simps have fucked it up for everybody so yeah. thanks to the internet thanks to social media thanks to all this other stuff it's basically made women feel as though i am superior to the average guy an average woman doesn't think mm -hmm. that uh an average guy is on her level she thinks i deserve a guy that's at least three four five points above myself even though i'm only a five on the sexual market scale but the reason for that is going back perfectly with the steps that you mentioned with appreciation anticipation expectation entitlement dependent and then if you don't give it to them yeah. let's say you do take a girl on a date and she doesn't reciprocate that attraction you say you know what we're going to split this bill she's going to look at you as an enemy why mm -hmm. because there's this preconceived notion that you as the guy need to bow down to her I got in an argument recently with a girl. So hang on a second. Let's yeah. go through it. So we got victimhood. Yep. Go ahead. We got spoiled. We got complainers. We got ungrateful. We got leechers. We got modern day women. We got entitled. <laughs> what are we solving okay. for right now exactly? We got bitter. These, these Question of the most annoying people that suck the best energy out of Nag you. Uh, right? Naggers. Naggers. <laughs> liberals. <bit>. Liberals. Okay. <laughs> Lib but, but, but if you say Crap liberal, magnets. a lot of liberals will be a, a, a lot of these qualities, right? Yeah. So then you got what? Crap magnets? Okay. <laughs> so crap magnets. Okay. You know, you know, what's, you know what's the best uh, uh, question here to ask with the following? Here, here's a question. Which which side produces more of these? 
okay, v- those who lean on the government to take care of them or those who are independently taking care of their families. The left is way more. Clearly the people uh, well, yeah. on the left. So, so how did left. that happen? Then you know what happens with there? Okay. If the left views uh, the, the America's kids as their kids, because this is a village, mm-hmm. right? We're living in a, a village America, right? Whatever you it call it. It takes right? a village. To yeah, yeah. Well, this is, oh, it's not your kids. It's uh, 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 our kids. Uh, yeah. uh, it's our kids, right? Um uh, so, so hang on one second. So, so if that's the case, then who gets judged for the kind of kids they raise? The left does. You know what kind of people you're raising? Looters, victim of mentality, spoiled, complainers, ungrateful, leechers, modern day women, crap magnet, uh, uh, would you say liberals, entitled, bit, bitter, naggers. Your philo- philosophies are producing these types of people, okay? These types of people. What's the philosophy on the other side? Leave me alone. Let me do my thing. Let me live my life. Don't buy, whether it's a libertarian, whether it's an independent, anything from center to the right, it's just leave me alone. Let me live the life that I want to live. So the judgment comes on what? Bad policies produce these types of people. These types of people ruin a nation. The, ch- the ability to want to change these types of people takes a decade, Vinny. In many instances, they don't even know it. A lot of them cannot be saved. They won't be saved. We're having a conversation yesterday about words, right? The power in words yeah. and, you know, where it's like, hey, be careful saying that because that, that statement doesn't have a lot of weight behind it, right? When certain men talk, they have weight behind their words. When certain people talk, they don't have weight behind their words. These guys don't have weight behind their words. Their words is what? It's not fair. That's a weak statement. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not fair. It's not this. It's not that. It's not. Those are all weak phrases. No leader says it's not fair. No independent person says it's not fair. If we simply gauged the weight of words being used by the left and the right, the level of weakness of the weak words being used, they would be at the top, and this side's going to be more on this side, Mm -hmm. you know, at the bottom. They would lose an amount of weak words to be used. So philosophically, if we're talking about this whole conversation around what can we do to really change this, like you're asking that question, that's a two-decade problem because the population of acting like victims and Everything else, the other person's fault. That population keeps increasing. And to speak to entitlements, it's so it's so apropos. Like you posed the question to Myron and Walt yesterday. Let's go back to 1963. <laughs> Let's go back in time. And what has changed? And we all know the famous quote from JFK: "Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country." Yeah. And that is the antithesis of what entitlement is at this point. Mm-hmm. What can you give me? What can I get? How much money can I get? What can I receive? Entitlement, 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 participation, participation, participation. And it just goes to show where the country has gone and how far left the left has gone, mm-hmm. where JFK at this point would be a moderate, probably center-right Republican at this point. Yeah. And now, uh, look at us now. Let's talk Joe about Biden. the debt ceiling. Let's talk yeah. about the debt ceiling. Biden McCarthy reached that ceiling deal to avoid default, and here's what's in it. Um, President Joe Biden uh, and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have reached a debt ceiling that are on June 5th deadline. Biden described the bill as a compromise where no one got everything they wanted. The 99-page agreement includes provisions to keep non-defense spending stable in 2024 fiscal year and increase it by 1% the following year. It also included a two-year debt limit increase. The deal fully funds Medicare for veterans, including $20.3 billion fund for toxic Exposure and expands work requirements for the uh, for the super supplemental nutrition assistance program SNAP and SNAP. Uh, with changes expiring in 2030. The 90, uh, 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 the agreement uh, resents around 30 billion dollars in unspent coronavirus relief money, while exempting funding for veterans, medical care, housing assistance, Indian Health Service, and a program for COVID-19 vaccines. It introduces changes to the National Environmental Policy Act to streamline the process. Additionally, the deal ends the pause on student debt loan repayment within 60 days. Although the GOP's proposal to rescind the White House plan to waive student loan debt did not make it into the package, the House is set to vote on the legislation on Monday. So here are six things you you must know from the new debt ceiling from political. Number one, work requirements. The deal tightens work requirements for SNAP and temporary system for needy families. And it introduces new time limits uh, uh, for uh, receiving food assistance affecting individuals up to 54. Number two, energy permitting. The deal permits mining changes to the permitting process for energy projects, clean energy funding, 
totaling hundreds of billions of dollars. COVID Act clawbacks, IRS cuts. What's the IRS cuts? The deal claws back a portion of the $80 billion in funding to the IRS. The exact amount is not spending specified, but it's relatively small compared to the Republican demands, which is sought to rescind over $70 billion. SNAP uh, spending caps, uh, they went from non-defense uh, uh, largely flat at around $637 billion. So, in, in other words, the left won and got what they wanted. That's what the negotiation sounds like. Defense funding is capped right. at the president and 86 student loans. The deal preserves President Biden's plan to cancel student debt up to $20,000. The agreement allows the Education Department to resume collecting monthly student loan payments and interest potentially costing around eight, $5 million each month. So, Tom, when you see this year, who won this negotiation? Uh, the Democrats did. Uh, there is no strong, enduring change that's going in here. Uh, remember the IRS, all those new agents and all the regulations are going to go out and do all this and turn the IRS into a sort of a militarized. Uh, guess what? That $80 billion is still intact. Uh, the thing I read said that maybe $10 billion was trimmed off of it. And remember that $80 billion was new. Remember all those agents that they were going to hire mm -hmm. and everything? That's all in there. So, okay, take $10 billion off that, but the rest of it's funded. And then you look at the student loans. Um, student loans, okay, you're still going to 20000 off the top. So the American taxpayer covers that for everybody that studied art history or, uh, you know, one other useless degree. Feminist it's, theory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sitting, exactly, exactly. <laughs> sitting on debt. All the rest of us are going to uh, take care of them for $20,000. and But they can go back to trying to collect the um, uh, the balances from everybody else. And the other part the, that I, I noticed, check this out. The work requirements and the needy assistant, they expanded and then, but they sunset the limits in 2030. What's 2030? That's two presidential elections and a midterm away. So there is an intentionality to kick the can on providing entitlement Here's what the uh, Republicans got. They got out of it saying, hey, we want to reduce all this dependency money. We want to reduce this entitlement money. We want work requirements so that we do don't... Basically, it becomes universal basic income if you're just giving it to people and there's no requirement to work. You follow that, Pat? It basically becomes universal basic income. Except... All of a sudden, you go back, and this is going to expire in 2030. So the Republicans put an expiration in there. You know what the expiration is? Two presidential elections from now. It all goes back to to free money. And the, 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 the energy permitting, yeah, you know, minimal change is the permitting process for energy project, which means it's not allowing drilling and expansion of um, shale oil or other things like that. But clean energy gets its billions, which is going to head right for the auto industry at 7500 bucks a car if you buy a green car. <laughs> but just don't try to plug it in California because when all those people in California have electric cars, you're going to cause... So in other problem. words, Biden yeah. is a better negotiator than McCarthy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Somebody got up to the... Uh, I don't know if it's Biden is a better negotiator or there was just more... Can you imagine if you're McCarthy, you're in your 40s, 50s, you're young. For the rest of your life, your legacy is going to say you couldn't negotiate with an 82-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> what a freaking great legacy a, for yeah. you guys. That great job. That was a 58 sleep. years old. <laughs> got out-negotiated by a 24-year-old older man who uh, has a hard time going up the stairs, falls three times, but he beat you. In a by, by, the, by the way, while you control Congress, yeah. while you control Congress, it's not like you didn't have Congress. You have Congress. There is, and you were... House of Representatives, and you wouldn't drive it harder to get what you wanted. There's a lot of people on his camp that are not happy with their negotiation. So The only thing that's good about this is $30 billion, which was effing pork, that was sitting off to be used for any purpose whatsoever that was part of the uh, coronavirus relief. That was $30 billion that the um, Dems had put in there to use for anything. That got axed. That was a, it's called an earmark. It was a big earmark and, and that got pulled out. But um, you look at everything that's in here. This is such an opportunity to do things for the country. And they kicked the can down the road and they gave in on a bunch of things and they put a 2030 deadline and going back to the American public basically giving UBI to a lot of people that are perfectly able to work and just don't want to. And Biden's going to spin this. Obviously. Bi Biden's what? Going to spin this. I would absolutely spin this. Of course. This. I mean, I mean, for, spin as in what? To say, hey, we. Look what we did. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Agreed. But, but well, by the way, it, I mean, if this were a movie, if we I mean, we've seen the debt ceiling thing happen year after year, you know, every, every handful of years. If this is a freaking Marvel movie, like Tom talks about, it's like the world's coming to an end. We need someone to save us. The debt ceiling's crashing down. Oh, Marvel did it again. Thanks, Captain America. Thanks, Superman. Thanks, Batman. We all know how this was going to end. Thank God. Um, but it, it's not like this was gonna. They were gonna let this happen. Yeah, in I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, a former government employee here, like the government operates in what I call controlled chaos. You know, continuing resolutions, raising the debt ceiling all the time. I think we've done it like a hundred times or something like that exactly. since like World War II. So they're always operating under. Okay, let's just get this. Uh, let's make it to this point and then just increase kick the, the can limit. Down yeah, the road. exactly. It's literally quintessential kicking the can down the exactly. road. Exactly. But at some point. That road's yeah. gonna have to come to an end. Yeah, and that government can's shutdown gotta comes, get recycled, homie. You know, yeah, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> government shutdowns, all that stuff. I've been through several government shutdowns when I was uh, uh, an agent, and it's just, you know. And then here's the thing: you're considered an essential employee when you're law enforcement. Yeah. So you know, you would still go to work and be like, all right, I guess I'll get paid in a lump sum in like a month from now. It just because right, that just paycheck's coming, just yeah, not now. It comes just not now. Whenever you have a government, it shutdown. happened under Trump. I want to say where they yes. the whole negotiation with Pelosi and yes. Schumer. And she's like, yeah, everyone's going to blame you. And he's like, I'll take take it. Don't worry. I'll take it. And then what we saw happen is, you know, 67% of this country lives paycheck to paycheck, including government employees for sure. So when they don't get their check in two weeks or in a month, Oh, I remember the, the crowd last, gets restless. The last government shutdown um, that that went down when I was an agent, like everybody was freaking out, man. Like, yeah. oh man, what's gonna happen? Blah blah blah. This is you know pre-pandemic, but yeah, every time it happens, it's like an eighteen, freak out. I want to say. Yeah, yeah, like eighteen. Yep, yeah. under under Trump. So mm-hmm. luckily, it didn't last as long as when it was under Obama, but it happens. You know, that's what it is. The government is perpetually kicking the can down the road. It just show what shows what happens Next. if you rely on the government. Yeah, weird. Good things are not happening. Poll: sixty-six percent of voters say Joe Biden is too old to serve four more years. A majority of voters, sixty-six percent, believe Joe Biden is too old to effectively serve <laughs> another four years as president, according to uh, Quinnipiac. Poll: Republicans and Independent largely hold this view, while Democrats more divided with. Fifty-seven percent saying Biden is not too old. <laughs> In contrast, only thirty-seven percent of respondents think former uh, President Donald Trump, who is seventy-six, is too old uh, for second. Interesting. Thirty-seven percent compared to sixty-six percent, uh, even though they're only five years apart age-wise. Republicans and independents lean towards the belief that Trump is not too old, while Democrats are split on the issue. Washington Post backup. Backed up focus group also highlighted negative assessment of Biden's physical abilities and mental health with swing state voters questioning his age and speculating about dementia. Can you play that clip by Jake Tapper, please, if you have it? Here's Jake Tapper uh, 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 on the show yesterday. On last CNN, night. Yeah, on CNN right, huh? yesterday. Uh, talking about, uh, uh, you just had it, Rob. The age? Didn't and you just have it a minute ago? I did. Let me, I'll grab it right now. Do you know what happened when they told when they asked Joe Biden what he thought about the poll? You know what he said? <laughs> what are polls? He had no idea what the hell they were talking <laughs> no, about. He, didn't see he just walked away. <laughs> he started Stop. shaking hands with the air. He probably he said, like, I haven't been to a gentleman's <laughs> club for many years. That's probably what yeah, he exactly. said. <laughs> Every <laughs> president's <laughs> job to keep his daughter on yeah. the poll. He's like, polls? make it bigger. There we go. That's go ahead. That's hilarious. As far as I remember, can we play this? We're helping the Ukrainian. Can we play this? Can we play this? Audio, I can't hear it. Can we play this? Yeah, CNN. It's fine. It's a reaction. You know, but they need all the views they can get. Facts. You can't do audio? Audio is up on my end. Okay. Team. All right. So, what, uh, Tom, when you think about a poll like this, how 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 important, how critical is this? Rob, can you just check to see maybe another clip can play that? How critical is this when you see 66% number like this? Is there any credence to this poll, or is it just another thing that they're showing here? There's a lot of credence. What happens is, remember how bad the pollsters did in the last two elections, how wrong they were. You could take the results of the election and go down a list of polls, and there were very few of them that were within their previously stated margin of error. Right now, so let's separate the polls and then talk about the American psyche. The American psyche right now has seen Trump on CNN. They saw um, DeSantis announce live on Twitter. So the election is at the front of their mind. And so the closer we get to election, the more we get more people show up in what's called the likely voters. Because remember, they do the polls. You'll see them that says registered voters. Uh, this was a poll of likely voters. Would you say you're a likely voter? Yeah, I'm pretty pissed off what I just saw. I, I'm definitely going to vote. So the likely voters right now have been activated for the moment and they've all woke up and said if the election was head today you're a likely voter what would you and everybody's saying this gosh you know with china with the economy with everything i i, I don't know this is real 
This is very real. But does it mean that the Dems are going to pull back on on the you know the 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 cardboard cutout that currently is serving as our president? I don't know if they're going to do that because they're they're running the country behind him, right? It's a proxy. Yeah. We have a, we talk about proxy wars. We have to all understand right now. Right now we have a proxy president. That's what's going on right now. <laughs> yeah. We need to think about this. And it's not and it's 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 not Kamala the cop who you know you know what what I feel about her as the AG of California and the devastation she had. Right now, people are close, Pat, and they're 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 second guessing it, and they're saying, "I do think age is an issue. This this is very real because the voter for the moment has been activated. This is all going to subside. We're going to go in the holiday season, and then they're going to pop back up in January." But, but do you think, Tom, that the age uh, situation is going to be big enough to have those voters that we talked about, Adam? Because you know the Vegas numbers on all the ones that I looked at has Biden yeah. in number one. Biden is the favorite to become the president. Do you think the age is enough? Because I don't think it's about the age. I don't think, it's not even about his policies. The voters that are voting for him are going to vote for not Trump. Yeah, that's, that's what it's going to be but at the end I, of the day. I, so it's a not Trump vote. I, I, you, you know how I feel, and I think Pat may, he'll speak for himself, but I think he's coming on this page too. I believe the proxy president stays in place until they decide that the health crisis is there. I think Michelle steps in, and she is your Democrat candidate. Michelle? Michelle might, I, I think she's the low Oh, you're saying that Michelle Obama's going to step in all of a sudden? Yep. No, I, I, yep. I've, I've been dismissing that idea for years at this point. I don't think she's I think running she might whatsoever. Be the one. Um, to your point on Vegas, I think that will crystallize and be cemented once there's a candidate from the Republican primary and then that person, whoever it is, Trump DeSantis, will be the favorite. Uh, listen, for anyone that doesn't think that the age is not a problem, you're living in La La Land. Okay? I, mean, I mean, they are morons. You're, you're, yeah, you're, like, you're, you're living in La La, you know, La Land. It, it, well, just, let, me, let me finish oh, this one sorry, thing. Please. So, you know, what is it? 70%, 66% think that Joe Biden uh, is too old. 37%. By the way, did you see what number of percentage people think that Ron DeSantis is too old to run? Uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. That, people, that, that's not a concern. But So I think, I've said this before, the juxtaposition, if this were the case of Trump versus Biden on stage, we've seen that movie before. We've seen this play out. But Trump, I'm sorry, DeSantis versus Biden, the, the competency and the age disparity would be so glaring that DeSantis would just walk his way into the White House just because you have a 44-year-old man versus a 84-year-old man. It's so polarizing and such a just glaring situation where Trump's only four years age difference. I don't think it's going to be that big of a factor when it comes down to the election time. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality here is that people value, they don't value competency. What they value is how the candidate makes them feel versus the real Trump elicits a lot of, uh, you know, strong feelings from people. Oh, he's a racist. Oh, he's an asshole. Build the wall. Oh, my God. He's a big blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. was the United States a better country with him in office? Yes, it was. I mean, when I was an agent and he was uh, president, we're arresting and taking down some of the worst people. We're putting more pedophiles in jail. We're getting rid of more criminal aliens. The country was stronger when Trump was in office versus now. The guy can barely, you know, have a speech ready and or speak coherently even when there's a teleprompter in front of him. So... The thing is, is that people value how they feel about a candidate over the ca candidate's competency, which goes to show you that we live in a very pussy, stupid world where people lack critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. Well, we talk about this all the time, uh, policy versus personality. And what do you think most people vote policy. based on? Policy. No, you're wrong. It's what do you personality. Mean? Yeah. Most people are going to vote based on You don't like Joe Biden's policies, Adam? No, what I'm saying no. is I know, I'm, most I'm joking. people- <laughs> I'm joking. Most people are one or two issue voters. It's the it's the economy, stupid, or it's abortion, or it's immigration, or it's guns, or it's healthcare. Whatever it is, they got their one or two issues that they care about, um, but they're not going policy by policy, policy by policy. They're just like, all right, I hate Trump's tweets. He's out. Joe Biden's a piece of shit. He's out. And that's just how people vote. And and the thing also is that like you know people went off after Trump for the you know grab her by the pussy comment, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a clip that was. Over a decade ago, yeah. it was locker room talk when he was, you know, a star, etc. And if you don't think that men talk like this behind the scenes, then you're just not living in reality. If mm -hmm. anything, I want a president that I'm able to relate to. I'm able to sit down and have a conversation with. I love watching Trump's interviews like he did with Full Sun, etc. You can see that the guy is a personable guy. People can hate him, whatever that it may be. But regardless, you got to take out his personality. Okay, mm -hmm. 
is he a good president? Did he do good things? He did. It's it's pretty much irrefutable. But people are more concerned with how Trump makes them feel yeah. versus what he's doing on the real. It's hard to separate. That's exactly yeah, right. It Trump. takes a deep crisis of a nation to get people think about the real. Yeah. But it, during a deep crisis, they will. Mm-hmm. I saw polls that, um, that were like 90 days after 9-11. Are you glad George Bush is president or would you have preferred Al Gore? It was shocking. It was all the way over. Why? Because Probably 90-something percent exactly. favorability at that but, point. See, because you know what they were thinking? They were going about thinking, wait, do I want Gore, the hand ringer, pacing around the Oval Office, or I want the knee breakers here? And Dick Cheney was seen as a knee breaker. And so people were all lined up with, you know what? But it takes a crisis like that to get people mm-hmm. to go to the real. Otherwise, it's perception politics. But it also shows. By the way, here's even Jake yeah. Tapper from CNN. Watch this when he had to give this poll. Indeed, horrible news. <laughs> horrible for Joe Biden or <laughs> CNN poll. I'm so sorry to be telling you that. Can we hear it? Go back, please. I can't hear anything. You guys are talking over. It's 15 seconds. Go ahead. Indeed, horrible news. Horrible for Joe Biden or new CNN poll. While the president leads his Democratic competitors by a huge margin, two thirds of all of the American people surveyed, 66 percent of the public say that a Biden victory would either be a setback or a disaster for the United States. Can you imagine Jake has to read that? That's not a script. By the way, he's getting more credible and credible by the day, by the hour, Jake Tapper. Wait, is that news or is he making an apology? Jake Tapper was like making an apology. Yeah. Dude, he said said horrible twice. Horrible news twice. Horrible for Joe Biden. I'm shocked they even they didn't cut him off. Listen, I'm shocked they didn't go to commercial. Can you just give CNN credit for a second? For I mean, years they were feeding it's, us it's, nonsense, it's and this CNN. is actual. It's not CNN. This is it's him, Jake Tapp. That's what I'm saying. I'm give giving him Jake credit. Credit, not CNN. Give Jake credit for the work that he's done here. Yeah. Here, give, yes. And by the way, he cannot stand Donald Trump. No, he hates. He all. cannot stand. I am willing to bet deep down inside. He is hoping DeSantis becomes his president. For sure. Yes. I am hoping deep down inside, he's sitting there saying, please get this, uh, you know, Biden guy out. I don't want the other guy in. Let's get somebody like a DeSantis in. I think that's who he would want. And a lot of guys in his world would rather have a DeSantis than a Biden or a Trump. I think guys like him would rather have a DeSantis in a, in a, 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 or a Trump or a Biden. Yeah, well, CNN, for their ratings bet, they better hope Trump, like, they need controversy because CNN has just been going. They like need that. another town hall. He, he, they he revitalized. Yeah. yeah, Trump revitalized them with that town Bro, hall, man. Like, come on, Literally. what a generous guy. Yeah, what a nice guy, dude. He's such a that's that's he, he's a good good hearted guy. And, Bro. and the thing is this, right? People are going to say the things that they want to say about Trump. The point is this: he doesn't. Biden has not faced the same level of scrutiny that Trump did. If you if we had. Trump's family, right, involved in all the nefarious acts that the Biden family is involved in, do shady deals with China, uh, with China, accepting money from foreign nationals, um, all these shell companies, Burisma, you, Ukraine, you know, son, whatever that all was. All this, yeah. yeah if, if the, all this the crap laptop. was associated oh. with with Trump, yeah. they would have buried him no even hurt further. But you don't see the mainstream media covering that with all the nefarious links to the Biden organization. Oh my God, bro! If if it was a Don, if it was a Donald Trump Jr. laptop, well, with underage, it would be over. Smoking crack, underage Chinese girls. All the are you kidding me, bro? Would have been it. over, dude. They Done. went. You want to know how I know that they had just have a hard on for Trump, or they're trying to get him on anything? They indicted him up in New York, and I don't know if you were going to talk about this. Stop me if, I, if you guys were. They indicted him up in New York. Alvin Bragg, Attorney General out there, went ahead and indicted him for falsifying business records, which, by the way, guys, is a fucking misdemeanor. Okay, but they went ahead and hit him with the felony because they think it's going to be in furtherance of a felony. Which I'm looking at my head like, wait, he paid off a porn star. Uh, uh, his attorney and already ended up getting charged for that federally, et cetera, maybe, whatever. Now the state of New York, and that's what Alvin Bragg campaigned under, by the way. I'm going to go after Trump. I'm going to yeah. go after Trump. And the best he could do was a falsifying business records, which is typically a misdemeanor charge, but he went ahead and tried to enhance it to the felony on site of, oh, it's a furtherance of another crime, which I think they might try to use the, uh, uh, you know, donating to a um, campaign over exceeding the funds as the subsequent crime, which doesn't make sense because that's a federal crime. That's a whole other thing. But they just have a hard on for him. You know, the, the lawsuit Suit, right, which I actually read the lawsuit on air. It's written as a novel. It's not written as a legal document. It's literally. I want you guys go on Pacer and look it's at like that a thing. Fifty Shades of Grey type it's thing. It's literally a Fifty Shades <laughs> of Grey thing. And the woman that made the allegations 
basically her strong her case was on her testimony and two other witnesses that she called right after the act so and everyone's running around saying trump is guilty of sexual assault no he was found liable in a civil court it is not the same thing preponderance of the evidence is a far smaller burden than it is beyond a reasonable doubt but the court of me you know public opinion wants you to say oh he got convicted of sexual assault no that is not true he was found liable and it doesn't take much proof in a civil case to prove 51 percent versus 49 essentially did you did you see the the interview with the lady with Anderson Cooper? It says so. Were you physically raped? Oh my no, god! No, listen, rape is not physical. Oh. <laughs> rape what a joke. can be emotional. What a rape joke. can be. And, and and Anderson Cooper, have you seen this or no? Yeah, what I haven't seen this, but it sounds. Can like you <laughs> please find that clip? Do you know which one I'm yeah. talking about? Emotional or no? rape. Emotional no, rape. But, but have you seen dude. this? No. Oh my goodness! You, because and it's the the funniest part about this is. How uncomfortable Anderson, Anderson Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, right there. If you can, if, oh my God, zoom out a little bit. And who's this girl, Pat? So this is the lady, this is the girl that says uh, Trump raped her. Oh, okay, God. watch this. Go ahead. You don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. Which, the word rape carries so many watch sexual this. connotations. This was not, this was not sexual. For, it just, it, it hurt. It just, what, it just, you know. Well, I think most people think of rape as a, I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I a think sexual. most people think of rape as being sexy. Mm. What? Let's listen. take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm. Listen, listen. We're going to take a quick break. We're gonna, if you can stick around. <laughs> well, no, no, listen, <laughs> listen. Listen what she says. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> listen. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Did you, you know, see? That, yeah. What, dude? The f I forgot to mention one yeah. thing for y'all when I read through this document, right? Yeah, clown world. Fucking clown world. This woman, by the way, just so you guys know, when she made the allegation, right, against Trump uh, that he he graped her in this uh, in this uh, store, right, out in, uh, out in New York City, Manhattan, what she basically did was she went ahead and released it first in a newspaper, okay? She released that part of her book in a newspaper. Then she went ahead and released the book and did a tour. You're telling me that this woman was actually assaulted as she claims but she conveniently go ahead goes ahead and puts this out right before while trump is campaigning and also when she's right in the middle of a book tour and the harvey weinstein stuff was popping off oh my like come God. on man like perfect timing like what what's going on and here? the craziest thing is myron people will like they'll just say they won't they don't go they don't dig deep right yeah they're just like he raped her you didn't yeah. hear he had pinned her down and trump raped her in some lobby and this is the girl like he raped her how emotionally what did he do he just just being there she felt like violated i'm so confused this is the problem we don't use static terms with a lot of these liberal retards out on the left they want to go ahead and say stupid shit like i feel like i was raped or he raped <laughs> yeah. me emotionally no it's penetration against your will stupid okay that's what it is, <laughs> it is. that if you're if we're going to go ahead and make serious allegations about people well we need serious definitions on what the fuck we're actually talking about but over there on that side of the internet they want to use ambiguous terms like sexual assault and i felt this way or blah 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 regret is not rape but that's the problem is that people feel like they can go ahead and retroactively withdraw consent and it's getting into a very scary situation now where guys are gonna that have any type of status whatever you need to make these girls sign ndas or consent forms or whatever because they're coming after the fact 20 30 50 years later right saying oh this happened to me blah 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 to go ahead and push a fucking book yeah that's yeah that's by, by the way if you show this video of this lady again who does this lady remind Let's, you of by the uh, way what's her name flavor flaves uh no ex-wife you've seen 40 year old virgin yeah with the, the, oh, the, the you have that picture i sent you the one that with, works at the, the manager uh, yeah she's like you're fascinating <laughs> I'm going to put some blush on you real quick. You can tell she's in yeah. another world, dude. The clown world. By the way, what's embarrassing is this how lady. uncomfortable. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what, what's, what's, what's embarrassing is how uncomfortable Anderson Cooper was. Exactly. And how quickly the producer told him in commercial. his ears, commercial now, ASAP. Now. This is embarrassing. Wow. Yeah. And then the clip's gone viral all over the place. Okay. And I'm surprised. The first time you're seeing this. Yeah. Absolute embarrassing when you see her make the argument that rape is not physical. Oh my yeah. God. So, but, 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 so he, what? She's so, so, so much though. So he's in. Sometimes <laughs> it's so a fantasy. Yeah. 
So he so this is what he got in trouble for New York and he's he's in court and everything. It's for this person? This is one of things. Oh they, my they got, god. Listen, their their goal is to do whatever they can for this guy not to run. That's what their goal is. Absolutely. Their goal is to it's, do whatever they can for him not to run. It's so obvious it's a targeted attack. When I read that lawsuit and that complaint and then saw when she filed it, she claims this happened back in the freaking nineties, yet she comes out with it, you know, right before she puts out a book. And here's the other thing. If you had really been assaulted like that, right? Why would you take that part of your book specifically and put it out in the public in the newspaper to see how people respond to it? As soon as people respond favorably, okay, I'm dropping a book, and then boom, book tour right after. No one questions any of this stuff, and it's like, dude, is she serious? But that's why she went to a civil court versus a criminal court. Yeah, this, Let's go is, to a the next story. this is a playbook. An unassailable victimhood is what we have now. That's what we have now. Yeah. Unassailable victimhood. You can claim victimhood on anything, and the only way to make that work is ambiguity. Ambiguity of defining Facts. genders, ambiguity of what a fact is, ambiguity of what rape is and isn't. Now you have unassailable victimhood. This is a playbook, ladies and gentlemen. Folks, didn't we talk about this earlier? The words we came up with. So yeah. qualities of the most annoying yeah. people in the world: yeah. victimhood, <laughs> victim spoiled, on there, complainer, yep. ungrateful, uh, leechers, modern day women, <laughs> a crap magnet. What's the next one here? Is entitled, bitter, nagger. I mean, this is this is these are all elements and qualities of that, and she shows some of those qualities. Let's go to the next story. Here. DeSantis is going after Trump like never before. This is a CNN story. Uh, 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 let's see here. So, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, now a candidate for president, has openly criticized former Donald Trump, calling him fiscally irresponsible, a supporter of amnesty. For undocumented immigrants and blaming him for destructive COVID-19 policies, DeSantis aims to flex the powers of the presidency like never before, intending to fire Trump's handicapped FBI director, Chris Wray, on his first day if elected. He believes Trump has changed since his 2015-2016 campaign and asks questions. I don't know what happened to Donald Trump. DeSantis, by the way, that's a very good strategy. DeSantis plans to push the limits on the executive branch using his knowledge of the Constitution, leverage points, and the true scope of presidential powers to accomplish his goals. He wants to discipline the bureaucracy, dispel the notion of independent agencies, and issue pardons for cases involving political targeting of weaponization. So check this out. That whole concept of I don't know what happened to Donald Trump of 2016, 2015, he said the other day, one of the things he's been talking about is Trump keeps going further left. Oh, yeah. Trump yeah, keeps yeah. going further left. I actually think that's powerful to wow. make that statement. And in shows in Florida, dead heat race between DeSantis and Trump. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former President Donald Trump are tied in a neck and neck contest among likely GOP primary voters in Florida, according to a recent poll conducted by Victory Insights DeSantis. Narrowly leads with 38.2%, while Trump follows closely at 38% in a head to head matchup between DeSantis and Trump. The governor holds a slightly stronger position with just over 40% compared to Trump, 39%. The pollster, senior pollster Ben Galbright, acknowledges the uncertainty regarding the durability of these results. He suggests that DeSantis' surge in the polls may be temporary reaction to his campaign launch, or it could slightly, it could signify, signify. The beginning of a successful campaign, the outcome of the nomination may hinge on Florida Republican voters. As a leaked audio from donor meeting reveals the importance of winning the state's winner-takes-all presidential preference primary schedule for March 19th of next year. What do you think of when you see this, Myron? It's crazy, man, because it's going to cause divide. Um, I think the thing is, is that, you know, DeSantis obviously is very, uh, people love him down here in Florida, but I don't know if the rest of the country knows about him like that. So, um yeah, I, I wish they would they would collaborate and work together and, uh, you know, take over the Biden administration. But, you know, that's not going to happen because now at this point it's kind of in the court of public appeals and they've been making fun of each other. And, you know, Trump's been po poking fun at him. So, yeah, we're we're past that. But, Myron, do, do you think that they can't do what the what the Democrats do? We talked about this in the last podcast. Biden and Kamala went at it. But right when it was done, he's like, I love you, vice president. There's zero chance that. That it's, happens if Trump wins because they're not going to go the other way around. It's possible, but not not probable mm -hmm. is what I is what I think. Just because it's been kind of them just shitting on each other the whole time, and I mean, even even Trump's been he's been going pretty hard at DeSantis and so yeah, and, and stuff. And Kamala was never on Biden's level. I mean, she was no, of course he, she was punching up. He was like, all right, cool, yeah, well, whatever. I'll, I gotta I gotta cross off a African American woman and make her vice president. You're one of four yeah. people.
people that are candidates, and yeah. if you kiss the ring, so to speak, yeah. I'll, I'll give that you the... That was a political move. Exactly. Oh, it was a political time. move. Like, That's what he did. Speaking so, of definition, she's not African-American, right? So, well, she's Indian, Jamaican, Jamaican Indian, Indian. Indian American, yeah. <laughs> sure. By the way, Thank have you, you ever me. seen Kamala when she was dating Montel Williams and Montel Hot. went to an event with, with two, two girls? two women. Gangster. Oh, really? Her being one of them. Have you seen yeah, it? Yeah, I did, yeah. Of course. Yeah, Montel Williams. Sounds like Myron up there. Montel was with her and another girl and went to an event. Look at that. Pimp. Look at that pimp. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, He's chilling. Look there's many a pictures on the internet with me and two girls. That doesn't mean I mean, that, obvious. That, that they yeah, but you're date. not the vice president. No. And you're yeah. not no. uh, uh, Kamala Harris. That's uh, And, uh, you know, Montes, Montel, that. when Montel was running the number one. By the way, what's so funny? Is, is that a cross he's wearing or is that a sword? It's, I think it's a sword. Oh, okay, I was going to say. It's very, actually probably it's a, a cross a, sword. A, it's probably one of those cocaine uh, uh, sifters. Uh, <laughs> you just unplug it if you've seen uh, Cruel Intentions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, I, can I say one thing about DeSantis? Um, it, it's interesting. Because I don't think that there's, there's going to be some uh, cohesion there. I think that's yeah. I, I think that's too I wish, far but gone. I wish too. I think that's too far gone. It was interesting. I was ha I watched the Heat game. By the way, shout out to the Heat. Um, uh, I was watching. It was Game Five. It was a few nights ago. I was with all my buddies from that I grew up with in Miami. Years all you've known these guys. Yeah. 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 All um, this segment of my of my friends, they're all liberals. All of them. Okay. So and safe so, space for yeah, you. Yeah, it's a safe space. <laughs> safe space. So I come in late. You know, because I was working late that day. And I walk in, they're like, oh, look who's here, Mr. MAGA, Mr. Right Wing. I'm Jesus like, oh. Christ. So it just shows, like, as a registered independent, like, you can't win these days. No. If I go into right wing circles, I'm the soy boy, I'm the I'm the leftist, the communist. And if I go into left wing circles, I'm the MAGA, I'm the Trump. I was like, listen, guys, no relax for a <laughs> yeah. second. But I said, is anybody here a Trump fan? No, fuck Trump, Trump, fuck. No. I go, all right. Um, uh, none of these guys are voting in the Republican primary, but I know I get that this is anecdotal. But I said, all right, uh, if you had to choose between Trump and DeSantis, who would you vote for? Ten guys, okay? These are never Trumpers. What do you think the results of my internal poll was? Eight to two, DeSantis. I was going to say okay. seven three, six four, seven three, DeSantis to Trump. Okay, Trump, Trump seven, DeSantis yeah. three. Yeah, Tom. Uh, I'm gonna go s also six four to Santa. It was split down the middle. Oh god, oh, five okay. five. So just for some perspective, these guys who never I have they, to meet these guys. Yeah, to know who they are because <laughs> okay. at this point I'm not yes. I'm not sure You're they not all convinced. hate Trump the yeah, way yeah. you you, yeah, yeah. you pinned I'm it. I'm telling you they, they do, were, yeah. and they would never in a million years vote for Trump. But that's in their mind how low tr uh, DeSantis is, well, and well, they're all Florida Miami Dade guys, yeah. but. You know, well, the Santos is popular here in Florida, but I just time. don't know if the rest of the country is gonna, you know, it knows who he is or cares. You know, obviously yeah. Trump is the more polarizing figure. Right. He's, you know, he he's more marketable, right? And yeah. Trump did a fantastic job when he campaigned before mm -hmm. Make America Great Again. You know, because he's a businessman at the end of the day, and he understands that you know, be, being a president is advertising. You know, making fun of Hillary, lock her up. You know, yeah. crooked yeah. Hillary, etc. Like yeah. all these memorable moments. Do you have all any of these like memorable moments with no. some Not of these other close. guys? Like no. Obama when he campaigned, change, right? Like yeah. he was real big on. We're yes, gonna we go can. ahead and yes, yes we, we can. can. So um, the the presidents that typically win, especially in in this social media age, are yeah. the better marketers. And, you may, and, you and they, they say that um, you know for every business, you either have a uh, product problem or a marketing problem. I think we know what Ron DeSantis' problem is. It's yeah. a marketing problem. Am I, Trump don't got that problem. Yeah, no. am I, we made a good point because like <laughs> the, the the country doesn't really know who DeSantis is. Yeah. But the left has put out those little markers of don't say gay bill. He hates gays. And yeah. the NAACP just put out that thing that said, warning, don't come here because they're actively going after black people. It's like, come on, bro. So the, the country knows of him as being Florida, as being like... Like a Nazi, don't, like don't come here. You know what yeah. I mean? And and all these polls that are behind all of this, this is right now what we have is they are pop activity polls, mm -hmm. right? You have a little activity and you have a pop. You have a little activity, you're gonna have a, a drop. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have a little activity pop, little activity drop, and that's why uh, Victory Insights pollster uh, Ben Galbraith was saying, hey. Uh, we really don't know about the durability of the poll. What he's saying with the durability of it is like, hey, three weeks from now, somebody's going to make a little verbal gaffe, and then it's going to pop the other way. Americans aren't going to wake up and be really pollable, mark my words, until the morning after the collegiate national championship game. Oh, wow. That way, all New Year's is over, all the... 
all the games football is done. over and we're into the serious part of the year. I believe we're going to be in the recession there. And the people are going to wake up and go, wait a minute, we really got to, we really have to do this. And you're going to have Iowa, South Carolina, New Hampshire lining right up. Until then, we're going to see pop and drop, pop and drop, pop and drop. Okay. All right, let's go to the Tom, next story. popping it and dropping it. Popping it and drop it, Tom. <laughs> we Get know what it, kind boy. Of music 10 o'clock in the studio. morning, baby. <laughs> uh, Elon Musk Neuralink wins FDA approval for human study of, of uh, brain implants. This is a Reuters story. Um, Vinny, I, I heard you were like getting, well, uh, uh, you know, like asking to be uh, early. I wanted to be one of the first humans, in this. didn't it? Yeah, so Elon Musk Neuralink has received the approval for the first human in Charlotte. A significant achievement for brain implant startup uh, uh, amidst. Uh, uh, ongoing investigations into its animal experiments. In recent weeks, the FDA has not inspected Neuralink's laboratory practices, despite concerns raised by employees and experts. Victor Kraut, uh, Krautemeyer, a former FDA official, stated that the FDA should have verified the reliability of Neuralink's animal study results before proven human uh, trials. Musk's envisions the brain implants as a potential cure for various conditions and has expressed confidence in their safety even offering to implant them in his own children, the FDA, uh, um. the FDA had previously highlighted safety concerns uh, regarding the device's lithium battery, wire migration within the brain, and safe extraction without damaging brain tissue. So, <laughs> can you run a poll? Oh, R- God. Run a poll saying how many of you would be open to the idea of going on first trial testing? To have this chip, Neuralink chip, put into oh your brain. Just curious to know what percentage and, is going to say yes Pat, versus and no. And it's more than a chip. It's wires, wiring in your brain. And I just thought, and I remind you, Elon Musk, awesome, space traveling, doing all this all this stuff. He's doing bought the Twitter. It might be a wolf in sheep's clothing, bro. This thing is, I don't notice, this all happened. Uh, the FDA approval happened on the day that they did the whole thing with, with DeSantis. They went live, all that stuff. Bro, they can't even do the live event, right? You want to put a freaking, they want to put wires in your brain. I just don't, who's to know that at one point they have all this shit in your head that they could put shit in there to control your ass and make you, you do shit that they want you to do. I don't trust that. All we've read, Pratt, we're Christians in the Bible. I've always read Mark of the Beast, Mark of the Beast. It's when stuff is going to start being put inside you is when it's game over. I don't trust it. The FDA, Pat, they, they halted a bunch of stuff because thousands and thousands of animals, pigs, were dying. They were fail testing. The animals were tripping out. They just killed They just killed the animal. I think they're going to be testing on people that are have extreme physical problems, which mm. at that point, they're like, listen, this person's, They'd rather be dead than you know be in the state that they're in. Go ahead, test them to see if you could fix their so problems. So when are you I, signing you up? The rest? On Thursday. Okay, on Thursday, perfect, I'm actually perfect. going Good. to get you see the rest of the quote. See the rest of the quote. Musk, the rest of the quote, he said, I invite other presidential candidates to join me on Twitter spaces and so that we can make their opinions known to the American people. And I would like to offer... Joe Biden, a Neuralink test at no charge. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, so Just, at no so charge, he's allowed. They're going to test his brain? Everybody else can come on Twitter spaces, and then Biden, he'll give him the Neuralink chip at no charge. Well, but, that, Tom, you say stuff like that. You're a pretty serious guy. He's joking, folks. Yeah, guys, this is a joking. joke. Just it's so you know. It's hard he to didn't offer sometimes. that. Don't go put this on Twitter. According yeah. to Tom Ellsworth, yeah. Elon Musk is putting a chip into Biden's uh, brain. I think I don't a trust lot it. of people are going to sign up for this thing. I just don't trust it. I think Sorry. aside from the people that, you know... Uh, the people who find it necessary, the people with major uh, nervous system issues, mental health disorders, what have you, I think these people Would are. Would you do it? No, I'm out on that. No. But I think people are so young people, especially. Are you permanently out on this? I'm out. Uh, I'm per- just, no, I'm, no, hang on a second. Are you permanent? I'm good being a human. Meaning, five, ten ne- years. Never say never, but I'm in the never camp for right now. Okay. Because you know, but, you know how what, they're going to get you to never. Yeah. I want to hear that. I, I, I'm probably in the never camp, okay. but I'll have so to say like this. Five percent opening there, probably. I, I went to school with a guy that got the external, it's basically um, the external hearing mm-hmm. technology, you know, that actually, you've seen, you've seen people yeah, with that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's amazing. It, it was absolutely amazing. I mean, it's this wire that goes in there in a cochlear imp- implant that's inside your ear. And then, you know, that it just, it, it changed yeah. his life. So I've seen technology firsthand do that. And I was completely blown away and i was first thinking oh, you're gonna walk around with this thing but it was such a a life changer for the guy and so i i think that's probably the path we're gonna go on here ultimately but Pat, how about you myron when are you signing yeah. up for this thing definitely not but this is how they're <laughs> gonna get it streamlined out 
they're going to incentivize people by paying them money to do it. Of course. Whether it's going to be some kind of stimuli check or, hey, we'll give you 5, 10K, go ahead. Uh, you know, we'll give you this money right away, tax free. Just put this chip in your head, oh. and it's going to be the beginning of. How you think they the government's going to pay or a private company? It could be. It could be both. It could be where the government pr- promises it and backs, it and then the government, and then they go ahead and you know oh. reimburse the private company for doing so. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I want to know Pat not, too. Pat, what about you? I want to know where Pat because Pat, hear me out. Yeah. Right now, right now, Myron, it's for people that you know, like they have strokes, they can't use their hands. It. They're, what they're saying is you're going to be able to basically download. French and have like if somebody's speaking to you in French, you understand it fluently in your ear through this thing. And who knows what the the future is going to be, bro? You could download like in the Matrix. Remember when they were like, he's yeah, like she's going to fly karate. the helicopter. She's going to fly the helicopter. Yeah, she yeah, says, exactly. give me the helicopter. Yeah, Superhuman. You download. It's going to yeah. create superhumans. But, but again, it's it's who controls that download. At what right. point could just put out a massive, hey, all of you idiots, now you're our slaves. Period. I don't trust him. I, I think the guy's brilliant. I don't trust that shit. They're going to target Sorry. the susceptible people, the poor, the weak, the yep. sick. Yep. Hey, put this chip. It's going to make your life better. And they don't got nothing to lose, and they're going to get some money out of it, so they're going to do it. And then that's how they start. And they will and he's, it. And, yeah. it. and it's coming from Elon. He's the savior that's of true. free speech. He put, you know, he has spaceships landing back on it. I don't, I don't trust it. Sorry. Yeah. So deal. you're canceling your Thursday appointment. Thursday's finished. You guys, okay. you guys just talked me out of getting Rob, what's the poll so far? What's the poll so far? Let's see the poll. I'm curious. Uh, no, good job, guys. 89% good job. said no. 11% said yes. That 11% is like, let's go. You They're going to have to sell Can you refresh? We'll just press refresh and let's see what that poll is. Refresh uh, 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 to see where it's at now. I'm Can curious. you go to it? Seriously, so 89 are saying no. No. 89 still the same. 89, 11. Okay. 12, All right. 1,200 votes. Legit. Let's 89 go. saying no. 11 saying yes. To the 11 that are saying yes, why yes? To the 11, that's a big percentage to say yes. So yeah. why yes? Is this, it, it, you know, you know what it's like. Like I remember in in a uh, 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 part of in, in the company, insurance company, we had a movement going on where guys were taking. Uh, what is the thing you take in school to help you study better? Adderall. Is, uh, Adderall. 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 So uh, yeah. people were calling me, hey, what do you think? That guy over there in that office taking Adderall, it's helping him focus better on this. I'm like, listen, dude, here's all you need to know. I don't take Adderall. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't, anything that controls me, I'm not a fan of. Like, I don't want any of that stuff. But look, a lot of people did. Like, I, mean, maybe just, I, I got ADD. And my doctor <laughs> told me I got ADD, so this Adderall thing is really helping me out. Like, all right, dude, you keep telling yourself that you're right. You believe it. You know, if you want to do something like that, go for it. So there's going to be a camp of people who are going to, history tells us, you know, anything that's come to expedite and speed up the process of getting something without having to work hard for it, there's a long line of people that open to that big idea. Market Why would, that. There's a big market for that, right? So, you know, the movie NZT. I'll never forget the Limitless movie. Remember the oh, Limitless, Limitless movie? Oh, Limitless was sick. By the way, this is the f- my first ever piece of content that went viral. Do you know the story what? to this no, or not? Do you know the story no. to this? No. So the movie comes out, and I had a, a website called PatrickBedavidBlog.com. Can you go to it? I don't even know if it's around. <laughs> go to PatrickBedavidBlog.com and see if it exists. Somebody, Where does it go? Somebody probably bought it, Pat. Yeah, no. okay, so it doesn't exist. So we had this blog, and I would write something once every other week. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 2012. Check to see when Limitless came out. The night it came out, I wrote this article. I'm actually curious to know. This was one of my first five uh, pieces of content I ever wrote. 2011. I wrote it the night it came out. Go to the day it came out. Do you know the day it came out? Anyways, so I write this article, and I write. March 8th. Okay, March 8th. So March 8th, I write the article that Saturday. 12 years ago. Okay. Years. So I write the article, did Einstein use NZT and where to get it? Okay. Oh. So then I write, and all this stuff, you know, in life, everybody's looking for shortcuts and all this stuff. But what if there was a way to get NZT? Would you use it? I go to sleep. <laughs> I wake up in the morning. This thing's at the top of Google. I have 10,000, thousands of emails asking me, do you know where I can get NZT from? I said, I know like nothing cr- about NZT. Yeah. It's just an article I wrote, yeah. but it was the power of the internet, how an article can get viral. It just tells you how many people watch the movie and they're also interested in this NZT. This was the article, right? Whatever I wrote in this article uh, yeah. 12 years ago. That's but sick. Probably cool. the moral of the story is what? There's a massive market for people who want things without the hard work. Mm. That is not going to go away. And I'm telling you, so many people are going to subscribe to these chips 
because every time they got a new upgrade, they got a new, like, you know, the whole Tesla that automatically upgrades, the new upgrade to the brain, the new upgrade, we have this, a new upgrade to this. Oh my God. So, so now watch, I'm like, there's going to be like a, a thousand kids in high school, 920 of them have a 4.5 GPA. Oh yeah. So, so education goes berserk. Mm -hmm. This thing can come like, yeah. because they're like, why am I needed? Exactly. Why do you even need me? Comedians are going out there in chat GPT saying, sure. can you give me a monologue on this and tell this joke and the style of how this comedian says that comedian and then boom, let me clean it up, add my own words to it and go out there and read it. Right? So if this thing does what it's capable of doing with the upgrades, why do we need school? <laughs> why, why do we need to go to high school? Why do we need to go to college? What do you need it for? You need information? Just get the link. That's all it is. It's a very interesting direction we're going into because, you know, during uh, COVID when people were saying uh, 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 some people had on their profiles where people were buying uh, men's who hadn't taken a vaccine. And pure got, bloods were the yeah, pure bloods. Yeah. Whatever it was called. buying sperm from, buying, getting, girls were dying to get sperm from. You made like 400 that bucks That didn't that. take vaccine, right? That, well, yeah, that didn't take vaccine. Like me, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So this is almost like a, a, a camp of people dating each other who don't have the you know, chip in their head so you can actually talk to somebody oh normally God, yeah. where it's not like knowing all the Yeah, answers. like, hey, are you chipped? No. Okay, let's uh, let's have and, a talk. And the reason why this thing is going to be successful, unfortunately, I hate to say it like that, is because human beings always strive to go the path of least resistance, right? You look at, you know, people go ahead and get gastro by bypass surgery, right? Because they're fat. This is going to be more on bypass surgery where people are going to be able to get <laughs> some chips in their head and be able to like, oh, now I can speak another language. Oh, now I'm a critical thinker. I'm no longer a retard. Like, people yeah. are going to go ahead and do this <laughs> Because they're like, I'm an idiot, so let me go ahead and get this chip in my head so I can not look like as much of an idiot. But that's what it is. People people are just lazy. We live in a very instant gratification, Uber Eats type society where people don't want to necessarily work for certain things. You know Microwave what would hustle. Imagine if everybody yep. had a six pack. What's the big deal about having a six pack? It does, Nothing. It doesn't matter. If anymore. everybody was shredded and cut up, what's the big deal? It's no longer attractive to be that, yeah. right? It's the complete opposite. If everybody, if you right now, if I ask you right now, uh, you know, what day did John F. Kennedy graduate from high school and, you know, who was his best friend? If you right now, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my God. It's not even fun. So, okay. So what yeah. is the fun aspect? There's none. What makes it fun is when we can study people who can naturally compete at a high level to see who can get to that peak performance of competition naturally. Yeah. The moment you take that natural method of competition competition out, if you if you beat me, you didn't beat me naturally. There's no uh, 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 there's no meritocracy. There's no meritocracy, but yeah. there's no like, man, I'm impressed by this guy, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, I'm not impressed by you. You're a yeah. chip. You're not talking. It's the chip talking. Yeah. There's nothing impressive about you. What's impressive is the chip you got. Yeah, yeah that's an course. impressive chip, yeah. but not you. So you actually lose identity. But again, will it be a trillion dollar business? 100%. Oh, my God. Oh, no, here's, no. here's the other thing, too, people need to understand. God. Most people are literally stupid. Like, I, I think people <laughs> need to understand yeah. that, like, the common American is a functioning retard. Like, they are stupid. They lack retard. critical thinking skills. Retard. Oh, retard. Okay. Re uh, re retard. <laughs> right? Yeah. A, a retard, retard. Um, but, like, the point is, is that people, especially nowadays, right, they lack critical thinking skills. Yeah. They're not able to look at something, question it, come to their own conclusion. They're going to go ahead and go with what everyone else says. People are sheep nowadays. So, you know, this chip is just going to allow people not only to be controlled, but it's going to help them. Not, I guess help them not be as big of idiots. What, what's Neuralink's, well, it's, uh, what's it, Neuralink's uh, stock price right now, Rob? Because I'm just not to cut you off. I I'm curious it's, because it's. I mean, they're, they're it just got approved, so I'm curious to how where it's at and where it's going to be going. I don't think it's public yet. Is it not public? No, I don't believe it is. But no. what I will say is it's fake success. We talk about this all the time, where oh. uh, the tale of time will actually reveal who has the success. It's steroids for the brain. And we all know that steroids doesn't have a happy ending. It's also stimulus for the economy. It's participation trophies for every other kid out there. Uh, there's going to be an unhappy ending at the end of this for somebody. Yeah, so, so let's go to hiring. Hey, at our company, what are the benefits you guys offer? We give you the uh, latest version CRX uh, 2 uh, e, e Edition 72. Uh, it's a $220,000 chip that we have. Uh, one of the benefits we offer is everybody that starts with us, we put that chip in you. And we finance it for you. Oh, wow, what a big benefit. But then when you leave, you have to give that chip back. 
Oh, no. See, that's and a form of a retention. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you return back and to and retardation. Forget about 401k. Yeah. Forget about this. Immediately, you're going to be at the top of your game working with our company because we have the best chip in the marketplace. Wow. And people, are, people are dumb now without a chip. Could you imagine you give them the chip, then you take it back? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> 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 you know, think about it, Pat, because that whole time that you've Kibor had that chip, that the whole time you've had that chip, your brain hasn't been yeah, working out. Yeah, it hasn't out. been developed. You haven't learned how to you know, independently research Dude, stuff, that how to t- talk to people. You're literally going to be a bubbly. Everybody. <laughs> 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 page, page 13, cop. <laughs> We're about to get canceled. I hope not. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, my God. What is this? We, we don't really sign up for my room. We just go back to the Cro-Magnum. Just a bunch of freaking gorillas. That's what is so that, funny, bro. Uh, uh, oh, my God. So the story at the top of page 13. Read so, it. Southern accents could cost job seekers oh, 20% wait touch on penalty this. Yes. fines. Thank so, you, Tom. So what you guys are talking about with the chip, <laughs> it, you, you, it, to get hired, you can't just be dumb. You can't sound dumb. So basically, a Southern <laughs> accent. Read the article. Bill Read Joe article. and Jim Bob. God. A study conducted by the University of Chicago and the University of Munich revealed that job seekers with a southern accent may experience a wage penalty, potentially earning thousands of dollars less per year. The research indicated that individuals with strong regional accents, particularly southern accents, could face a wage penalty of up to 20% compared to those with standard accent. Another study conducted by the Writing Tips Institute found that 38% of job seekers admitted to modifying their accent during an interview due to negative stereotypes. The study identified the profession with job applicants are more likely to change their accents as real estate, tourism, public service, information technology, you know, science, engineering, hospitality, finance, retail, healthcare, and media. You sound like a stupid I'm sorry, bastard, Tom. Tom. You sound like a yeah. dumb bastard. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you is, right now, there, there's a lot of truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. I, you know, so when the South, you know, I went to college <laughs> at Florida State, and there's some there's Freak. Southern people out there. Yeah. I also went to college my freshman year. I played football at Greensboro, I, North Carolina. I, I hung out there. There's a difference between Southern charm yeah, and Southern true. hospitality and being a Southern belle, and there's all that. Yeah, yeah. And then you have Senator John Kennedy out of Louisiana. Oh, my God. He's the funny. That guy the went to law school, UVA, and he, he sounds like this. He goes, yeah, hey, yeah, I, I, you're I, stupid. I'm, I'm talking to you out here, and it just, it's something that dog don't hunt. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, go back to it when just it's 20. It does not sound okay. exactly intelligent. Well, dude, well, the last thing, like, can you imagine going to get surgery? Surgery, open our yeah. surgery, and the doctor's like, "I, right, we're gonna open you oh. up. Get in your right ventricle." I'm like, "Nah, dude, I'm good. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, get yeah. the hell no. out of here. I'll go to New York." The most <laughs> difficult yeah. accent to deal with is or, the Cajun, yeah. Bobby Boucher. Uh, yeah, Bobby, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, Coach, uh, Coach yeah. Kine, uh, I'm gonna get some water for you. Mama said, you the devil." <laughs> yeah, I can understand why nah, those people dude. are underappreciated, but don't oh you know, don't judge a book by its cover. This guy's actually a sharp guy. Funny dude. But now you're no, but now what your chip could do. Your chip could do in terms of linguistics and language skills, mm-hmm. it erases us, right? You yeah. get your chip and then you get your neutral accent. You sound a little bit smarter and you get the job. I, I mean, wouldn't be shocked if defense. that happened to him. He's, he's like from the bayou, Louisiana, but he, now he's all smart. He's a senator. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to the next oh story here. God. Last story here. That was good. Lindsey Graham says Russians dying is the best thing, oh, wow. Wow. best money the U.S. US spend. Uh, uh, and this could potentially get him a death threat if it hasn't already. So Speaking about Southern can you pull up the video? I think so, we right? do have the video. If you got the Lindsey Graham video, you have it in your notes. If, is that the one? Okay, let's just play this. Here's Lindsey Graham. Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now it's... Dude, wow, that is that, like that is that's evil, Pat. That's me, that's straight up, yeah, Pat. So, so let me just read. Yeah. Lindsey Graham made shocking remarks during a meeting with Ukrainian President Zelensky, and the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. Graham, uh, uh, Graham urges the uh, Biden administration to increase aid to Ukraine and express support for the international fighter jet coalition that will provide F-16 jets. He emphasized the significance of providing more weapons to Ukraine, stating F-16 will matter. It'll be decisive. Russia's ambassador to UK. Andrei Kellen warned of an escalation in the war in Ukraine as Western allies commit more weapons. I'll read the follow-up to this, and then, Myra, I'm going to come to you first on this one. Sure. So Russia issues Lindsey Graham arrest warrant uh, after Ukraine comments. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov commented Sunday by saying that it is hard to imagine a greater shame for the country that having such senators, according to the Associated Press, Russia's investigative Committee moved to open a criminal investigation against Graham and the Interior Ministry followed up with a warrant for his arrest. Graham considers the arrest warrant to be a badge of honor 
To know that my commitment to Ukraine has drawn the ire of Putin's regime brings me immense joy. I will continue to stand with and for Ukraine's freedom until every Russian soldier is expelled from Ukrainian territory, Graham said in a statement Monday. Finally, here's an offer to my Russian friends who want to arrest and try me for calling out Putin regime as being war criminals. I will submit submit to jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. If you do, he added, come and make your best case. See you in Hague. Myron. <sighs> this isn't our business. I mean, what I mean by that is the United States should not have intervened in this situation. The, people don't understand that Ukraine used to be a part of the USSR. And put, the thing is, is that people don't understand is that, and, and I have to give this equivalency for Americans so they understand, because a lot of them don't understand geopolitics to the same degree. What's going on with Ukraine right now is the equivalent to, like, let's say China decided to go ahead and have missiles in Mexico pointed at the United States. We would be in Mexico tomorrow mm -hmm. to get those Chinese out. That's essentially what happened with the Russians and uh, Ukraine with NATO. And, uh, you know, Russia, Putin's been warning them forever. Hey, you know, NATO's trying to encroach on Ukraine. You better not let them in. You better not let them in. If they, if they come in, we're going to have problems. And, you, you know, Zelensky kept flirting with NATO, and they came in. And what did Putin do? Okay, well, now we're going to return with force. And my thing is, I'm not on either side, but I understand where Putin is coming from because he's operating to protect his country. He's operating to protect his national security. And a lot of Americans don't understand that the United States would do the same exact thing if our enemy came into Mexico or came to us in a uh, position where they're at an advantage where they can point missiles at us. So I look at it like when you're talking about geopolitics, you're talking about war, you're talking about national security, etc. Every country is going to do what's best in their interest. And it's crazy to me how we can invade somewhere like Iraq, right? And we, for no real reason, right? We had a bunch of propaganda after 9-11. People don't even know that bin Laden and Saddam Hussein didn't even like each other, mm -hmm. let alone were allies. But we went ahead and used that excuse of 9-11 to go ahead and invade Iraq. And then no one said anything to us. But if Putin goes into Ukraine, which was a part of the USSR, and there's serious um, ramifications for NATO being there to their national security, we're over here complaining up in arms. It's not our business. We need to focus our problems at home, not necessarily Ukraine. And I'm not saying that to insult anyone that it might be Ukrainian or whatever it may be, but you got to understand that every country is going to operate in their own best interest for national security. Myron's 100% right. The U U.S. has some experience with this. It's called the Cuban Missile Crisis. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I just think Lindsey Graham, like, to say something like that, bro, to say, and the Russians are dying. He didn't, innocents, because, dude, innocent people die all the time in, in wars. It's the best money we spent. It's your, Lindsey, he's, that's a soulless warmonger saying some stupid shit like that. Yeah. Like, try saying that to the mother, or, like, even the young soldiers that are just, they have to fight. They're forced to fight. For him to say that, bro, that guy lost all credibility. He didn't have that much to begin with, but what a scumbag, bro, to say that shit. Just yeah, in front I'm of the camera. I'm too. wondering at this point how much he's owned by the military industrial oh, complex. That's what I was going to say next. Okay. You think so? so this, because this, you're making oh. comments like that. It's you're like. You're a scumbag, dude. I mean, you're a representative of the United States. You're a senator. I mean, <laughs> now he's got a warrant out for his arrest in Russia. Look, we've had this debate whether we should be in Ukraine or not. There's pros, there's cons. I get all that. I think at this point, what's the exit strategy? Because if this turns into another Afghanistan where they're, where they're in Ukraine, for 20 years, yeah. <laughs> I think the American does not have the wherewithal the, or, or, or the just the, the temperance to even deal with another war like this again. We have so many freaking issues at home. How can we de-escalate this and get us I out of Ukraine? I want to say one thing, too. Like, th this is 100%, like I said before, right? A lot of the times we don't wage war like we did in World War II. We do it through proxy, proxy wars, wars, whether we're aiding the side that is yes. uh, fighting people that we don't like or we're using spies or, et cetera, or using intelligence agencies to do things. Right now, a lot of these de documents are becoming declassified from the CIA, NSA, et cetera, of all the crap that they did back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and people are like, whoa, what's going on? They're trying to do mind control, whatever. Yes, and you don't think that they're still doing this type of crap nowadays? Mm -hmm. They're doing it even more so because we're not going to the battlefield and fighting. We're doing other things. And this war right now with Ukraine is absolutely, excuse me, this war with Russia through the United States, through Ukraine as a proxy, is absolutely a test to see, okay, let's test some of our new weapons. Let's see what's going on here. It funds the military-industrial complex because they need war to make money. Very interesting that we're kind of yep. ending on this story because we talked about entitlement. And as I said, and he, how much entitlement do you think Vladimir Zelensky has oh, on the United States at this point? What do you mean? You're not government. giving me more money. You're not giving yep. me more weapons. You're not giving me more artillery. I come on, oh, let's he, go. I'm entitled to this. Well, of course, he said it. 
He said it like a couple months ago. He's like, exactly. hey, guys, we need more money. Meanwhile, look at all the shit that's happening here with veterans and everything. People, billions and billions, bro. We're America's second to and, them. And bro. Ukraine, the, the mainstream media doesn't want to report this either. They're getting decimated. Russia has been taking ground and they're doing it slow and methodically because at the end of the day, Russia does want to capture Ukraine intact because they are they're, they're they're essentially brothers, little big brother, little brother, right? Like a lot of um, Ukrainians are actually ethnically Russian, so they're trying to take Ukraine over, um, you know, intact. Because here's the thing: people say, "Oh, Russia can't even win the war." Blah blah. If they really wanted to, they have a lot of the same weapons we have. They could have leveled Ukraine in a day if they really wanted to take them over, like we kind of did with Iraq. Airstrike, 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 then bring in the ground troops. But they didn't do that. They're coming in. They're systematically taking in positions of power, taking things from a tactical advantage, and that's what they're doing. And Ukraine is losing. And I don't know why we're still funding a war that we're not winning and don't have a chance of winning but Zelensky is trying to get as much money as he can he's a scammer as well but criminal and um you know it is what it is we're but, but the United States looks at it like hey we're able to test our weapons we're not putting our soldiers in line really we're able to test our technology etc up against the Russians who if God forbid we get into a war we can see where we stand so it, it, all parties here are winning except for the Ukraine yeah. and, and we're talking and about this from the American perspective how much time we want to put into this but how much time does Vladimir Putin and Russia want to spend on this? What's the famous quote from Afghanistan? Thirty seconds. You might have all the you might have all the watches. We have all the time. Yes. Oh, so wow, you know the the at the end of the day, it's where is this? Does Putin want to fight a ten year war, a twenty year war, a hundred year war? Uh, it's happened in history. And people before. could talk crap about Trump, but this war wouldn't have happened if Trump was in office. <clears throat> agree. Guys, we can talk about this for another hour uh, yeah. uh, on this topic. Myron, yep. fire. Uh, I love how versatile you are on topics. What Thank different you for things we can talk about. It's phenomenal having you on. I really enjoy listening I'll to your perspective. I'll come back again, guys. I like these talks. Yeah. yeah. So, except next time, be on time. Don't <laughs> <make sure laughs> All right. That so, is my bad. So, here's a, a couple that. things to keep in mind here, guys, with this Friday from 6 to 10. Uh, the podcast these guys are doing. If there's one thing they know how to do, uh, they know how to bring the tainment uh, side out, the entertainment side out, fresh, fit, Adam. It's going to be entertaining as hell this Friday, 6 to 10 p.m. at 5990 Live on Federal in Fort Lauderdale. Do not miss this one. I think the uh, uh, VIP is done. VIP sold out. I think out. the only premier thing that's is, left is a few I think premier, a couple more premier and some generals. Yeah. And, and this is at what? Generals 49. And then it's 149 for premier. Yes. I don't know what the price point. Yes. You guys haven't registered. Get registered. I'm only going to be in the cigar lounge afterwards. I'm going to come pop by in the last 15 minutes and spend some time with the guys at the cigar lounge. But you're going to get a chance to hear from him. You're going to get a chance to see this guy. And you're going to get a chance to meet maybe the most important person that's going to be there. Lover boy. Uh, you know, for me, I'm a big well, fan. I'm excited about him being there. So again, go on the website 5990 Live. Get registered, Vinny. You're gonna be there as well, right? I'm gonna be there. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell people don't don't do the Middle Eastern minority thing where we wait last minute. Yeah. Those are going to go fast well, as hell. Unfortunately, yeah. the people that complain the most about not getting tickets it's, it's are us. Middle Easterns because they wait because we're minorities. We wait because we think it's, we're cool. Well, listen, it's not, don't some wait. Cubans this is true. and Hispanics have a little bit of that as well. Uh, Doug, yeah, I put the minority. I love Don't judge us Middle Easterns the way you. I'll give, I'll give Byron credit for knowing his people. He, you know, tickets were they were, they were starting it. to sell, and he goes, "Give it to the last." I gotta week. go on at seven. Out. Gang, go get registered. Go we'll see you there. Take care, everybody. Bye bye, bye bye. Peace.